The folks from UTEP have made the long haul from El Paso to support their miners. And TCU, they're turning out in record numbers here as well to see the Frogs and the miners. It is UTEP at 8 and 2, TCU 15th ranked in the country at 8 and 1. Let's take a look at the wax standings. You'll see the important UTEP already a share of the title guaranteed the season finale today. TCU needs victories in this game as well as at SMU, and that could open the door for San Jose State to sneak in as tri champ. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons. Glad to have you with us on a great day for football here at TCU as these two teams battling for a championship. UTEP, the surprise team in the WAC. Well, really a surprise. Gary Nord has done a great job in his first year as a head coach for University of Texas El Paso. Come in here, at least a co-champion, at least coming in here. If he, they win, they win the outright WAC championship. That's just a special thing for them. And Des Franchione and his T TCU Horn Frogs, I tell you, they want to win today as well because they want to continue with a couple of wins. They could also have the co-championship at the end of the season. We've got a lot of offensive weapons here to talk about. Let's start, first of all, for UTEP and their trigger man, quarterback Rocky Perez. Well, Rocky Perez has been special for the Miners this year. You can see his numbers on the year. He's fourth in the NCAA in passing. That's tremendous for a young quarterback. He's come in there and done a very good job running Gary Nord's offense. Billy's had 24 touchdowns and only five interceptions on the year. That's a great ratio for a young quarterback. He's done a great job running that show out there. It's an offense that is multiple by simplicity, is what Gary Nord told me. So you're going to see a lot of special things in that offense today. Well, speaking of simplicity, that may describe TCU and their offense. Give the ball to LT, LaDainian Tomlinson. He is responsible. Well, give it to LaDainian Tomlinson. That's fine. But how do you stop him? That's what teams have tried to figure out all year. They haven't come close. He leads the nation in games and average yards per rush and second in scoring in the league. But Danny Thomas is one of those special backs who just has a knack of finding a way to get open. He wants to win something at the end this year. It's going to be the Doak Walker Award for the best running back and possibly the Heisman Trophy. UTEP trying to run the table in the whack. They don't want anything to do with co-championship. TCU trying to stop that and move on. We'll do that when we come back on Fox Sports Net. <laughs> And they did that without any rehearsal. Welcome back as Ladanian Tomlinson gets the big welcome on Senior Day here at Amon Carter Stadium. We're in Fort Worth for WAC football, TCU number 15 in the country, and UTEP coming in already owning a share of the WAC title. Let's take it down to the third member of our party, Kevin Eschenfeld. Thank you very much, Bill Land. The crowd chanting LT, and rightfully so. You hear a lot about him, but you also hear a lot about this TCU defense. Two very strong defenses going on today. Let's go back to last week against Fresno State in a 24-7 win. Help Fresno to just 41 yards on the ground. They were opportunistic. A pair of fumble recoveries. They get to the quarterback. Four quarterback sacks. They got 36 for the season. And when the quarterback finally got a pass off, they picked him up twice. It's the number one defense in the nation, allowing just 251 yards per game and only nine touchdowns in nine games. Now, as far as UTEP is concerned, Larry Hofer came over from Texas Tech. He's their new defensive coordinator. Don't think for a second that they won't be thinking about the 406 that LT put on them last week. We're going to see a lot of eight-man front today. As for the weather, you know, it's been like a horror story as far as the forecast is concerned. Winter storm warnings, but it's absolutely a great day for football. Guys, back upstairs. Thank you very much, Kevin. Yeah, 46 degrees right now, and hopefully it'll maintain right there. Wind really no factor. As you look at Dennis Franchione, his third year here at TCU, 23-10. and 10. They're headed for a bowl game, the third consecutive year. He just uh, hard-pressed to uh, continue with the superlatives that he has done. And Gary Norton, his first year at UTEP, you talk about a guy with a turnaround, 8-2, and two, and this team winning a share of a conference title for the first time since 1956, the old Border Conference, and they are fired up, to say the least, in El Paso. And we're ready here with UTEP to kick it off to TCU. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with the up top, Kevin Eschenfelder down on the field, and you see TCU with Dunbar back, number one in the whack number one in the country in kick return average at 32 and a half per kick. UTEP boots it off with Bishop's kick. It's short at the 15, 20, 25, 30, and across to the 33-yard line, and you see the dangerous return ability of Dunbar. 
Jacob Fogg made the tackle for UTEP, and 2CU will operate. First and 10, the ball on the 33-yard line. And the Frogs, as they break their sideline huddle, will come out with quarterback Casey Printers. And we're not handing off to Tomlinson. He's had time to throw for 11 touchdowns and run for three TDs. First and 10 at the 33. Tomlinson hit hard after he hit the 35. Ford Wilson takes him to the 36-yard line as he picks up three. The rest of the TCU offense, as you take a look at the quarterback, Casey Printers, the fine 57% completion mark, the TD's an interception he has developed all year. Their offensive line, four or five are seniors, led by Daniel Bobo and all whack picks. And don't forget that this team can throw the football a little bit as well. They've got uh, pretty good receivers, Dunbar certainly being one of them with 15 grabs and four TD's. On the second down, Printers tripped up as Casey, a sophomore from DeSoto, Texas, is hit for a loss on the play at the 32-yard line. Now, the UTEP defense vastly improved from 99. The senior end, Benson Holloway, with nine and a half sacks, the best of that group up front. The linebackers, certainly an outstanding group as well. Walker Merkins had 16 tackles and win over Rice. And D.J. Walker is, of course, at free safety in the secondary for the DB. Holloway lining up as TCU with third down and 11 following the loss. Printers with the option. Keeps it 35 and stopped up the 36, maybe 37 yard line. Trey Merkins was there, the senior from San Antonio. He is a 245 pounder, been quite a force. Also, DJ Walker, you see 16 walking off. He's a sophomore out of Midland Lee. Well, no surprise for TCU starting the ball game. They put ball three consecutive running plays, and they've done a pretty good job of stopping them. UTEP has. TCU has a fast start. They really have a good ignition. They have started five of their last nine games with a score in their first possession. Good job by UTEP of negating that early in the ball game. Joey Biasati with a broken leg last week against Rice. As a result, freshman John Brazil, the punter, he has punted 11 times this year for another 37 yards, and the bare footer gets it to the 25 and returned and stopped at the 32-yard line. And that's for SMU, whether TCU will bring out the defensive group against the UTEP Miners as you look at quarterback Rocky Perez and Perez leading an offense that is scoring 34 points per game. Perez, number one in the league in pass efficiency. We mentioned at the top of the show, 24 touchdown passes. That is a UTEP record. First and 10 at the 32 for UTEP with that big following on their sideline. Certainly giving them a bump today. The looking pass is complete. A hit. Oh, right incomplete. I beg your pardon. And what a hit in the secondary there by TCU as they were going to Austin. And Owens is the one that put the hit on him. Let's take a look at the rest of the UTEP offense. Veteran offensive line that helps protect Rocky Perez, who has thrown for 2,444 yards. You see the great TD to interception uh, ratio there. And don't forget the freshman Darcelik is the only youngster on that veteran offensive line. Center Kerry Clayton, a first team all whack pick. It is second and ten after the incompletion to Austin out of the backfield. And TCU with that defensive run. A big stop. Donald Perrell in on the tackle there. Let's take a look at the TCU defensive group. McCarty Burrell gets the start instead of Worthen, who is uh, out for a half due to an ejection last week. Brazil and Bayer, 161 tackles combined at the linebacker slot. And then in the secondary, Curtis Fuller, also a big hitter, as well as Russell Gary. Veteran, senior-dominated defense. Schobel is the star of it coming from the end. Third and nine. And complete at midfield. Across into TCU territory at the 47-yard line. 
Gary made the tackle on Brian Natkin, their all-star tight end, who is always big on third and long. Well, he's one of the best tight ends in the country. does a good job of getting open. That's what he does there. He works out of the traffic. A little bit of a traffic jam with him and one of the other receivers for UTEP, but Natkin does the smart thing. Gets in the middle of the field, and Rocky Perez fires a strike. Natkin is 60th reception of the year. He averages 12 and a half per reception and considered the one top receiving tight end in the nation. First and 10 at the 47, a flag thrown as TCU bumped off at the offensive line. Chad Pugh was the player that jumped Outside. off. On the defense, with contact, five-yard penalty, with each Makes life a little bit easier for Gary Nord and UTEP. Well, I talked about earlier that this is a offense that's multiple by simplicity. And what he means by that is they're going to run a lot of different formations, a lot of different personnel groups, but they really only have built six or seven running plays and six or seven pass packages. Gary Nord has really orchestrated this offense to perfection, and this offense has done very, very well this season, and their success is really evident. First down and five for the 42. And Porter carrying the football. He is stopped at the 42. Shannon Brazil, senior from Louisville, Texas, making the tackle. There's a look at Porter. Leads him in rushing at 684 yards on the year. Five yards per carry and five touchdowns. And really it's been more of a run by committee group after last year when they had the standout Paul Smith who was drafted in the NFL. Well, there's three to four running backs that get the ball back there and they run the football for UTEP. So we can see a number of guys touching the ball. Second and five and the four wide outs out of the shotgun Perez. Miss Fires. Intended for Joey Knapp. So you tell that time, it's the two tight ends in the football game. But what they do is they spread both tight ends out, almost like a four wide receiver type of an offense, and try to work the big tight end. Joey Knapp, he's got 11 or so receptions on the year coming into the football game. So they do throw to their tight ends quite a bit. Take a look at the defense quarter for TCU. That's Gary Patterson trying to fire off his horn for us. Now the Horn Frogs, with that nation's leading defense, only allowing nine points a game and only giving up 250 yards of total offense. It's third and five here for the Miners. Perez got a man wide open, incomplete. Oh my! Tessier just could not quite come up with it. Rocky Perez probably looked at that secondary and went, wait a minute, there must be someone else out there. Well, there's a miscommunication in the secondary. Curtis Fuller, number 18, gives him on the right side of your screen, come in the picture and go right past him. The receiver is wide open. Rocky Perez just leads him too much. That was been an easy score for the Miners. Fourth down and five, and TCU going to go for it here at the 42-yard line. Well, Pooch kick it. Somebody may have got a hand on it. Just a poor kick as it goes to the 30 and now bounces back in TCU's favor. And the Frogs will get it back with excellent field position, all things considered. We've got a flag here. I beg your pardon. Hang on just a second here. We'll see what the case is. Oh, that's a, 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 a six to seven yard net punt on that bill. Not a lot with a pooch kick. You want if you're going to try to shift out like the miners did and get a do a pooch kick. You want a better result than that. Otherwise, you're going to need dead to go ball. for it. Unsportsmanlike on the offense. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. The ball's there. For and do we replay the down or is it after the after the play is over? See Gary Nord's reaction here is he is not happy at all about the uh, and then Fran Dennis Franchione getting uh, an explanation on the other sideline. Looks like it's post possession Bill. TCU's going to take over about their 33 yard line. Yep, just offsets really as uh, they'll pick it up at the 33 yard line. <laughs> Bill, you talked about it earlier about this offensive line for TCU. That's been the, be the, the benefit for Lavendi and Thomason having an offensive line that has played so much and so well together combined wise. They've got 142 combined starts when we see them out on the field again. Gary Norris still wants some explanation of uh, what's going on. And 
Timeout called and giving Nord a chance to uh, really unload. He didn't talk that much to us. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, guy has just done a fantastic job with the offensive coordinator and then took over and immediately changed the attitude. Gary, we saw him in the opener up at the University of Oklahoma. We had no idea then that Oklahoma was going to end up being the nation's number one ranked team. We knew they were real good, but Gary Nord said, you know what? I came out of that one feeling pretty good because we turned it over seven times and we moved the ball against that club. We'll find out what it's all about here when we come back. Welcome back to Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas, TCU and UTEP. No score. TCU second possession. First and ten at the 33 after the long delay there and the discussion about the offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Out of the shotgun this time, Printers gives to Tomlinson. The Danian stopped at the 35. Tomlinson averaging 5.4 per carry, 18 touchdowns this year to match his total last year that ties a TCU record. Well, take a look here at the offensive line and how they do for LaDainian Tomlinson. One of the guys who's going to look pretty good today is going to be the big pain man, number 78. That's Victor Payne. He's their quick guard. You're going to see him pull a lot today and get in front of LaDainian Tomlinson and give him a clear running path. Ball loose in the field. Fumble. Utah still trying to reach it. Miners have got the ball inside the 20 of the home club. On the fumble recovery, number 42. Trey Merkins comes up for the fumble recovery. The Mike linebacker made the hit and the recovery, I believe. Well, Trey Merkins had to be his second fumble recovery for the year, Bill. Good job that time by the minor defense being opportunistic, causing a play here, trying to do something in the backfield. And just I think Casey Printers, the ball is just lodging. You can see the pressure there put on by Merkins. Good job of tackling, bringing the ball up for the minors. I believe Holloway also went on the play to help initiate that action. You see where Merkins stands on Fumbles Morse and Holloway as well. Pass on first down is complete. Inside the 20. It's a napkin. Charlie Owens covering for TCU. And that was a play for the Miners. It's a little boot play. One of the things in their offense that they like to do. And Gary Patterson, the defense coordinator from TCU, told us yesterday that Charlie Owens needs to play that play very well. His defensive ends need to come up and contain the quarterback so they don't have a clear vision down the field. Good yeah, job of time on the boot play. Patterson's got a way of a job leading this. TCU defense, second down and eight now. Not much for Rovan Cleveland. Cleveland, a freshman out of Moreno Valley, California, 6'1", 220, and he was stopped by Chad Bear. Bear, 5'11", 229, a junior out of Smithville, Texas. Bill, both these defenses are very similar. They play with a four defensive lineman, two linebackers, and five defensive backs the entire time, a 4-2-5 alignment. They want to get speed on the football field. They're willing to you know, sacrifice a little bit of size, but both teams play with almost an eight-man front most of the time, so they really want to stop the run. Third and eight from the 18. Perez, the throw, steps up to keep it. Got the first down as he slides across the 10. I think he does. You know, he started that dive maybe a step too soon. They may have to measure here. Walls was there to cover on the play, but you see some of the versatility of Perez. Well, Perez is trying to get to his tight end. You see Joey Napier, number 30, on the right side. He doesn't get open, but what Perez does is he comes right through the middle of the field. Everyone's vacated trying to cover those big tight ends and take the pass away, and Rocky Perez gets a big first down for UTEP. Did get inside the 10, and it'll be first and goal. And Perez, take a look at that last note there. Six touchdowns running the football. So you certainly have to respect him in both areas. Want to throw it. Complete at the 5. And that's complete to number 28. Forward motion stop at the 6. Chris Porter on the reception. Curtis Fuller on the coverage. We'll try to break some tendencies. That's only the fifth reception for Chris Porter this whole season. Doing a good job to get him out of the backfield. You try to think, hey, TCU's not going to think he's going to throw it to him, but pop it out there, see if he can get him open and break him into the end zone. Pretty good tackle, though, at the end of the play as the defense comes up and makes a hit on him. A good sure tackle on a big fullback. Good job that time by Owens. Second and goal from the five-yard line, officially. Cleveland 
near the three yard line where Donald Burrell made the tackle visit with both coaches yesterday and they say hey this is when you bring out all the tricks all those plays you practice all year two days or anything else you don't hold anything back well, you don't want to leave anything in the bag that's for sure Bill but the WAC championship on the line here Gary Nord wants to come in here and win this football game and win it outright it's something special for that team they've had a special year but Dennis Franchion knows what winning is all about he's done a good job with his program here he's got his players ready to play they're really ready to play hard Third and goal from the three for the Miners, trying to get on the board first. Perez, the short drop, puts in the end zone for Mays, and touchdown, UTEP, Lee Mays. His 15th score of the year, beat Greg Walls on the leap for the football. with 64 receptions, 1,051 yards coming in, and you can see why he's so tough to cover. And now Perez will hold as Ricky Bishop comes on for the point after. It is good, and it is UTEP that jumps on top first here. Mays with the TD reception from Perez, and the Miners go up 7-0 here in Fort Worth. Rocky Perez, touchdown pass number 25, and taking advantage of the turnover, and what a target to go to. Well, Lee Mays is just an exceptional receiver, Bill. There's 15 NFL scouts here today, and Lee Mays at the top of your screen is one of them they're looking at, and they're going to try to throw the ball up and out to him. 6'3", 190-pound receiver. He can jump, very athletic, 4'3", speed the 40. He's a tremendous athlete. And the kickoff, Dunbar, 10, 20, and rock hard. And a flag is thrown at the 22-yard line. Terrence Dunbar hit by Paul Smith by UTEP. Well, the scoring drive on this one, only 20 yards, six plays. Mays, the TD catch, is 15th of the year, but all set up by Merkins and Holloway in the defensive front coming up with the fumble recovery. On the return, illegal block in the back on the returning team. Ten yards, spot of the foul, will be a first down. Well, one of the things that Coach Dennis Franchione talked about yesterday, Gary, was, yeah, we need our defensive play well because we need good field position to help establish what we want to do. And UTEP gets a bit of a break here with the penalty against the Frogs, and now they're backed up a little bit. Well, anytime you can make an offense go the long field inside of their own 20-yard line, they're starting here at about the 12, Bill. It's a lot of work. You know, if you're going to run the ball down there, you, you think the odds are probably in your favor defensively if you're able to stop the run. Get three, three and three or four first downs together is not that easy to do. Springers to throw on first to ten. Got a man wide open. And overthrowing, boy, Dunbar left him in the dust. And Printers had it float on him just a bit. But Terrence Dunbar. Another look. Well, take a look at Dunbar here. He's on the left side of your screen, number three. He's going to get behind the secondary. The ball is just led too far. Casey Printer's got a little bit too much air under that one. He's throwing from the south end zone. I don't know if there's a breeze on the field or not. I don't think that's going to be a uh, you know problem. But we don't see the flags moving, so just a little bit overthrown. And DJ Walker beat that time in the UTEP secondary. Second and ten from the twelve. And a quick handoff. And. Ball stop. Didn't see a flag, but a little discussion going on. In future. A couple of penalties here a couple of times. Gary Nord hasn't been too happy in this football Outside. game. On the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. So, Dennis Franchione realizes, well, that's exactly what I need here. Chance to beat it back to Tomlinson. TCU, you might imagine, uh, leading the whack and running 268 yards per game. With Thompson, Tomlinson getting 186 of that. Their total offense, 393. So, the passing game at 125. And... 
Tomlinson across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Bobby King and Dave Perkins make the tackle for the Miners. Now, that's one of the things Daniel talked to us about yesterday. Whether it's first and five or, first or second and five, you know, do, I, do I drive a play-action pass game? Do I throw it on that down? Do I like, give it to my number one weapon? That's number five. And Tomlinson, and he gives it to him. And you can't make a wrong decision when you give it to Ladani and he gets four or five and, and maybe a big one. Well, and he is a back, and they've got the numbers here to prove it, that is much better later in the game. And they almost feel like they're cheating their team if they don't feed him the ball at least 25 to 30 times a game. Tomlinson on the pitch. 20, 25, 30, and first down and more. So Tomlinson on the third and short zips it across the 30 to the 30, maybe 32 officially where Merkins made the tackle. And Tomlinson, of course, last year setting the NCAA rushing record for a single game with 406 yards. This is his first big one today. Well, when your team can block well on the perimeter, which they do here, watch the bottom of your screen. That's number three, Dunbar leading the way, going to get a block there. Merkins comes from the inside out, trying to catch up that speedy tailback. A good blocking on the perimeter for TCU. That's why the Danian Tomlinson gets around the corner so well. First and 10 at the 31 for the Frogs, down 7 0 on a maze touchdown. Tomlinson rocked hard. But even when he's hit hard, normally he goes forward for a yard or two. And Kamar Jackson led the way there. Jackson, a sophomore out of Midland, 6'4, 240. Ladane and he hits the ball, Bill, 34 times on average per game. That's a lot of work for a young man. He does get, you know, a little wore out, it seems like, but you'd think he gets wore out, but he really doesn't. He actually runs more and more, runs better later in the football game, as you talked about. Just a guy who seems to see the cut better as the game goes on. The average nine yards plus a carry in that record center performance in two last year. The pass incomplete and almost intercepted by UTEP Shepard as A.J. Shepard, the rattler back, a senior from Mansfield, Texas, got an interception on the year and broken up now seven. Well, Shepard has a chance to make a big play here. Printers tries to throw the ball kind of off his back foot, try to, to sling it out there. He underthrows it. If Shepard just stops and plants, he comes back to the ball, he'll make the catch. But the receiver is up over the top and kind of unsettling there. Otherwise, it's an easy interception. Third and nine from the 32 for TCU. Tomlinson, big hole. 40, watch out, 50. Tomlinson shakes a tackler, and he'll take it to the zone. his season's best. His previous was 65 against Fresno. Watch the delay here. It's a delay draw. He lets everything develop in front of him. And then he just breaks the tackle and gets into the secondary. A strong one. Clemens cannot make the tackle. And Ladani and Thompson does a nice job of getting it into the end zone. An easy score for TCU. And Chris Kaliki comes on for the point after attempt. He's hit 48 straight. Hasn't missed one this year in 37 attempts. And answers UTEP. 68 yards, and the Frogs have even it up at seven with 402 to go in the first. Welcome back. LaDainian Tomlinson with a 68 yard TD run, his longest of the year. We'll give you a couple different looks at LT coming in your living room. Well, what he does, he does a good job of setting up. Watch the hesitation he has. The guard crosses with the center, do a good job of picking up the defensive lineman, makes it an easier run through for LaDainian Tomlinson. He doesn't get touched at the line of scrimmage, but breaks a couple of tackles in the secondary and route to a 68 yard score. Look at the delay that he has here. He stopped, what let everything develop in front of him. It's a good job. Good job of waiting for his lineman to make the blocks in front of him. I'll tell you, that's what he does well. He sets up his blocks and runs behind him, Bill. 19th touchdown of the year, a new record. And the Wax all-time leading rusher now at 4,852 yards. The kickoff comes to UTEP and is taken at the 20. Trying to go sideways instead of north and south is Sam Singleton, and he is brought down. 
Let's go down to Kevin Eschenfelder on the sideline. All right, Bill, and you know, it's been much talked about the admiration that LaDainian Tomlinson has for his offensive line. When the public address announcer made the announcement that LaDainian Tomlinson had become Wax all-time leading rusher, he got the standing ovation here. He immediately stood up, walked over to the offensive lineman huddle, stuck his head in, said, guys, it's all about you upstairs. Oh, he's coming over to shake Kevin's hand. <laughs> Wait a minute, what kind of build-up is this? He is just a class guy. Does a lot of work in the community. Always gives credit to his teammates. And, boy, being well rewarded here today. Perez on first down to Mays, and it's incomplete at the 31-yard line. So they come right back to Lee Mays, who had scored the touchdown for UTEP. Covering on the play was Curtis Fuller. Bill, that was an interesting set by UTEP. What they did was they took their offensive tackle and guard and actually put them out wide to the top of the field. Try to get three sets on the field, one at the top of the numbers, one in the middle of the field, and three players to the near sideline. They've run 40 different sets this year on offense, and that's just one wrinkle that Gary Nord has with that offense. Of course, Nord was the offensive coordinator there, and prior to that, uh, was at Oklahoma for the one year Howard Schnellenberger was there and has a Louisville background. During the football that time, Chris Porter on the second and ten, and he moves it to the 20. Seven and a half yard line, Curtis Fuller made the tackle that time on the minor running back. Gary Noor told us that they need to keep the T TCU defense off balance. They know the strength of their defense is up front with their defensive line. Their linebackers play very well. But they want to change things up offensively. Don't let them zero in on what you're going to do. You've got to run the ball, pass the ball, play action. You're going to see a lot of things with Gary Noor this offense today. You check. Third and four at the 28. and you see his disgust as Brian, a senior out of San Antonio Churchill and covered by Lamar Beal. That was an excellent throw by Rocky Perez. He's trying to hit the tight end on a flag route. The tight end works inside and then out. The ball is up and out there. Beal gets a hand on it. Matt can just can't pull it in. Brings on Glenn Beard to punt it away. A senior out of Weir, Mississippi, 6'2", 225. Best punter in the league at 41 plus per kick. Low kick. Takes a UTEP roll though. And inside the 30, down near the 26 yard line of TCU. And that's where the Frogs will get the ball back with the game tied. And TCU really concerned about UTEP's early scoring activity because UTEP on the year has outscored its opponents 107 to 55 in the first, Gary. And in the first half, 226 to 123. So it really has been a first half team. Go, go, go. You see Tomlinson set up here. Would you be wondering another record? Last year against UTEP, 406 yards rushing and six touchdowns. And Coach Dennis Franchione said he was about to take him out until he got the word. Yeah, one of the guys came on his eye and said, Coach, uh, you don't want to take him out. He says, why? He says he's about five yards away from 400. He didn't know it at the, on the field at the time. And he gave LT the ball just a couple more times and got enough to put him over the, the 400 mark. And Tomlinson, that, of course, gave him uh, the push for the Heisman rush for this year. And he has lived up to that building. And... They are very hopeful from the beginning that he would at least be in the top five and get to go to New York, and I would say he is on target for that. He's certainly very deserving of the consideration. Second and ten after he was stopped on the first down carry. Here's Printer to throw on second and ten. Going deep for Dunbar. Covered very tightly there, and nothing doing that time. <laughs> Clemens covering that time, and that's a game. Yeah, big part, not Dunbar. A little wheel right out there, go outside, and then turn it up the field, and Printer's trying to lead him, just leads him a little bit too far inside. And now TCU third and ten, and this is what UTEP has got to be hoping they get themselves into, even though Printer's can be effective. Here's the Tomlinson, breaks one off for 68. And it's possible out of the shotgun printer. Dunbar wide open and couldn't find the handle. A little bit low, but very catchable for LaTerrence Dunbar. 
Frangione calls some crossing routes on this play. LaTerrence Dunbar is going to meet the bottom of your screen. He's going to work up and then work across the field, get underneath the linebacker, let the traffic go out of his way. But the ball is a little low. He should make that catch. That's a catchable football. And LaTerrence Dunbar has got to be saying, hey, I need another ball like that. I can make that catch. Punning situation here for the Frogs with a score tied at seven. And there's Brazil with the barefoot. He, more than anyone else, is hoping we don't get the snow flurries and sleet and everything else that the weather forecasters have been throwing out there. Caught at the 35. And the first surge hits Schobel making the tackle at the 40-yard line. Aaron Schobel making the stop that time. And it'll be first and 10 now for UTEP. This one settled in a little bit. Those folks haven't settled in, though, have they? Boy, well, UTEP uh, setting attendance marks this year and now going on the road where they're at. Well, I tell you, over 50,000, you know, at their home games out there at UTEP, and they've traveled well here today. They're looking for what's going to happen with them and possibly in the bowl picture. That's a little bit undecided. If they have, if they win this WAC Conference Championship outright, they think that they may have a chance to possibly go to a little better bowl position, possibly the Gallery Furniture dot com bowl. They've traveled well to this one. First to 10 for the 41 for the Miners. Porter stopped at the 42, and you know, the bull picture will uh, not clear up until actually December 3rd because UTEP has certainly got an opportunity for uh, the Silicon Valley Bowl or possibly the Humanitarian with the WAC tie-in. But then, as you mentioned, the Gallery Furniture Bowl in Houston, which is currently a Conference USA Big 12, things could happen there that could open a slot, and there's also possibly that even the Sun Bowl in El Paso that is obligated to the Pac-10, the right things occur, something could happen there, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. Second and 10, and overthrown across the middle, Perez hit hard, Fuller was covering on the play, and you see the pressure that was put on that time by Terrence Mate. Well, you see Rocky's just going to step back in the shotgun here, trying to work his big tight end knack in the middle of the field as he throws the ball. Kind of almost a late hit there. Hey, that's kind of questionable. I don't know why the referee doesn't call that one. Hits him up underneath the shoulder pads. Took a full force from Maiden. Maiden fortunate to get away with that one. Third and 10 for the 41 for the Miners. to the right side and Perez coming that way incomplete intended for Lee Mays the junior out of Houston Westfield High School and Mays track stand out at UTEP that's the only TD today for UTEP Tomlinson for Francione's ball club has led them with a 68 yard TD run Russell Gary was covering on that play and it'll be up to Glenn Beard to kick it away again Beal set to return. Low kick by Beard. Beal taking on the run and good coverage by UTEP that time. He's tackled at the 25-yard line and the TCU Horn Frogs will take over there with 105 to go in the first quarter. 7-7 our score for the WAC title at stake here. Now coming up after this beauty, we've got more college football on a college football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. We'll take you to the Pac-10 where sixth rated Washington battles Washington State. It's the Apple Cup and full ramifications there, BCS and more as Rick Newhiles Huskies take on the Cougs of Washington State. That's following this one here. Gary Nord and the Miners set the defense up for a first and 10 to 26 for TCU. Printer to Tomlinson. Tomlinson, look at another one. 40. He almost hit the distance again. Clemens made the tackle. And Tomlinson stumbling about the 30, 33, and then kept on moving and moved it all the way out to the 40. Three-yard line, a pickup of 17. Well, you take a look at him here. It's coming right at you. Ladanian Thompson scoots to the line, breaks the tackle, keeps his legs moving. I'll tell you, if he'd have one more blocker, want somebody to hold on, get Clemens, or he could get him out of the way to know the score for the young man. Give him 18. It's first and 10 at the 44. Tomlinson breaks another tackle in midfield as he moves into UTEP territory. 
I think Ladanian will get tired, but actually the weather today, Bill, is very conducive for him to run and run a long time. You know, it's kind of a cool day out there. He's not going to get as tired, not going to lose as much fluids. Hey, I think he's going to get a lot stronger as the day goes on. Easy to breathe out there. Just going to be a nice, easy day for Ladanian. It's good there's only one game a week, though, in college football because they say he's a pretty sore customer every Sunday and gets better every day, and by Saturday he's raring to go, and he's shown that today. Second and four, the pitch to Tomlinson. Got the first down, and across to the 40-yard line. And Tomlinson, tackled by D.J. Walker. And he's looking like he could score on every run at this point. Flag is thrown. Going to be against the Frogs. Short it out, Bill. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to call here. Or it's going to be during the player post possession. Dead ball, personal foul after the play was over on the offense. 15 yard penalty. They'll still result in a first down. So that will be first down, and they'll enforce the penalty. Tomlinson with 124 yards rushing <laughs> as we get ready for the final play of the first quarter. Well, it's going to be almost a net first down where they started this drive from back in the uh, just inside their 45-yard line. Just outside at the 47. Fresh set of downs over TCU. Gary Nord's crew gets the ball pushed back into UTEP territory. And that's the end of the first quarter. We have plenty of action here as UTEP trying to win an outright whack title. TCU fighting to stay with a share. It's 7-7 after one in Fort Worth. Welcome back to Eamon Carter Stadium. We're in Fort Worth where TCU and UTEP are locked at seven. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Kevin Eschenfeld are with you. Well, Danian Tomlinson, who set an NCAA single game rushing record last year against UTEP. Well, yeah, he's on target to do it again with 124 this game as we get ready to start the second quarter in TCU ball. 68 of it on the touchdown run that tied the game. Printers rolling out on first and 10. Going deep. Incomplete. No flag. Trying to locate B.J. Roberts, the junior for Burke Burnett, Texas. Watch the defender close here on Roberts. Goes over the top and knocks the ball away. Good job that time in the secondary. DJ Walker got the five interceptions to lead this club. Back there. Second down and 10. TCU 47. Tomlinson shedding defenders as he skitters across midfield to the 47 of Texas El Paso. Shepard making the tackle. Tomlinson. We had him on there. Well, they've been on television almost every game on one source or another. Last time Gary and I saw him uh, against Hawaii, he had 49 carries and 294 yards for four scores. That was against Hawaii. Third and four here from the 47. Printers to throw and does. Complete. First down, GCU. As Kevin Brown makes his ninth reception of the year. DJ Walker covering on the play. Good look at Brown out of Hewitt, Texas. Waco High. Nice reception by Brown. Bill just get in the open area, settle down, and let your quarterback find you. Go ahead and stretch that defense out and get in between in the, the void in the zone. Nice job of execution. And TCU doing a nice job of mixing it up. About the time you think they're going to go strictly Tomlinson, they come back, deep ball. First attempt for the 39, and back to Tomlinson to go with the pitch. Tried to cut it back. 
and has got near the 37. One of the things Gary Nord mentioned to us yesterday, that the balance of Tomlinson impresses him so, and his ability to cut back, and that time UTEP, a nice job of pursuing to not allow that. Well, when you stay inside out on the ball carrier, which is what the defense did on that time, you're not allowing them to cut back. You have to play good, principled defense against a running back like Tomlinson. If you overrun him one step, he's going to cut back on you and make a big one. Second and seven at the 36. They fake the end around. Didn't fool anybody, but printers and pitches it outside. Complete to the 20, the 10, and out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 8-yard line. B.J. Roberts. Looked like the printers were the dead meat, but he got rid of it. And it'll be first and goal for the Frogs. I think James helped set that up with a nice block. He sure did at the end of the play, but Casey Printers really sets this up well. His athleticism is just apparent on this play. Watch him throw the football, dumps it out to his tight end, who picks up a couple of good blocks along the way. Take There's one there, and then here comes the big one, Bill. Oh, That's the one you're talking about. Hey, Cedric James says, hey, I got you in my sights, and uh, bullseye. Shepard is the one that finally knocked him out of bounds, trying to tightrope, but here is Lane carrying the football. Chad Purcell, I think, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So the fullback. Purcell, a senior out of California, just his ninth carry of the year. Normally we see George Lane. Second and goal from the field. James as TCU trying to take the lead for the first time today. It is second down and goal from the four-yard line. Nord looks on as the minor defense in trouble here. Touchdown TCU! There is George Lane. His fourth score of the year. Make it fifth. As Lane, fifth rushing touchdown. Wide open here. Well, watch the left side of your screen. You've got to have the guard pull around. That's Milliken. Cleans it up. George Lane follows right behind him. Good execution by the offensive line. And Lane getting it behind his block. TCU with the TD. They are now 35 of 36 within the red zone. Inside that 20, they have scored some form or another. 35 of 36 times, and the point after by Kaliki, and it is good, and TCU is up 7, 14 to 7 as Lane rolls into the end zone. Frogs 14, minor 7 in the second. TCU goes on top, 14-7 as the Frogs with George Lane on a four-yard TD run. And now, to kick it off to UTEP. UTEP coming off a 38-21 win over Rice to give them the share of the WAC title. 7-0 in the WAC. Down here, 14-7. And the kickoff to the 10, back to the 15. And TCU swarm into the football that time. And again, the ball carrier for UTEP, Sam Singleton, junior out of San Angelo, Texas. Ten plays, 74 yards, took 332, and the big play in that drive, other than Lane with the TD, of course, was the 29-yard pass play from Printers to Roberts. The offense is clicking. Go ahead and give it to LT and see what he can do with it. And he's going to get a few extra yards for you every time he touches the football. Whether he gets hit once or twice, he's going to continue to work. And... George Lane just finishes it off with a horn frog. And Lane, his fifth rushing touchdown, only 38 carries coming into the game, Gary. So you talk about productivity. Pass incomplete on first and ten here for the Miners. Being helped up is Alan Ray, a senior out of Houston. Defending for the home Fox, number two, Kenneth Hilliard. Well, Bill, you really wouldn't want to expect anything else playing in a ball game like this. Uh, UTEP coming in here is second in the WAC and scoring 34 points a game, and TCU is right behind them at about 33, I believe. So both these teams are capable of putting a lot of points on the board, and it's still early here in the second quarter. Of course, UTEP's only losses to now number one ranked Oklahoma and Texas A&M in non-conference action. Perez fires quick 
Hartley under pressure, and it is incomplete. Off of Porter's hands as he's trying to come up with the grab. And now, third and ten, and boy, this is when TCU's defense can really get an opportunity to shine as they come after you. Yeah, their defense does a pretty good job of rushing the quarterback. He had Aaron Sobel up there, their defensive end, one of the best in the country, I tell you, at the defensive end position. He's got six and a half sacks, and he'll have his ears pinned back on this one trying to get that quarterback. They've got 36 sacks on the year. The school record is 37. Third and 10 from the minor 15. They're down a touchdown. Perez. Got a man, Mays. He's open and got the first down and scampers out of bounds at the 31. Curtis Fuller beaten on the play. You have to respect the speed of Lee Mays. You get him one-on-one -on -one out there, you like your chances if you're UTEP. Well, Lee Mays, they're trying to cover him on that play, Bill, with the safety back off the field, and you just really can't cover a receiver with that kind of ability from depth. You have to come up on him and maybe, maybe bump him along the way, but when you let him come down the field to an open area, he's going to get open more times he's going to get covered. Track All-American, big part of that 4 by 100 relay team for UTEP. Handed off this time, out to the 35, Chris Porter. His best game, 118-yard effort against Nevada this year. Stuart Ashley made the tackle, senior from Katy, Texas, 6'4", 273-pounder. And UTEP concerned about the pressure that front four and how TCU can rotate that defensive line. Sometimes they wear you out instead of the offense wearing the defense out. Perez rolling out, got a block, but not enough. And he is stopped at the line of the original line of scrimmage. Uh, that's the 31, and it's going to be a loss in the play. job that time by TCU's defense and defensive end does a good job of staying at home and then pursuing Rocky Perez around the corner trying a little boot pass trying to get him in the open there you see Potter who came out there and made a nice play on the open the open field on the quarterback not allowing him to throw the football third and ten from the 31 UTEP came up with a third and ten last time can they do it again they went backwards in the last play Perez steps forward drills it incomplete Owens was covering on the play. That was Matkin. He was draping him. Well, they're trying to drill the ball into Matkin. That's the time when the quarterback kind of has tunnel vision. and give you a big tight end. Rhythm short for the first down. Good job that time by TCU. They had two defenders actually doubled Matkin the tight end off the line of scrimmage. Here's Beard's work today at 29.7. And Beal is back for the Frogs. It's a minor bounce. Beal at the 26. And loss on the play. Great coverage that time by UTEP. I think people felt coming in TCU at an edge in the kicking game. Well, not so far. Stay with us at 14-7, Frogs. <laughs> Ball is brought to you by TCU Basketball. Check out the latest edition of Billy Ball by calling 817-257-FROG for tickets. And by Frost Bank, the bank that's still from here. Good look at the Justin Athletic Center that the TCU folks are so proud of and should be as they continue with their facilities boom here on this campus that houses the football offices, the weight room, nice little... Uh, historical area as well and they announced plans yesterday to build a brand new baseball stadium with funding already underway here is tomlinson to start things off on this drive on a first and 10 for the 23 and lt short of the first down by maybe a yard and he's shedding tacklers on every run gary well, that's what this offense likes to do is actually spread the field. They've had three receivers on the near side of the field that time, Bill. Run the zone play, give it to the, ta the tailback deep, let him read. And Thomason does a great job of reading the blocks and cutting back, cut back against the grain on that play and picks up nine. Second and one, the ball at the 32. Tomlinson for the first down. At the 30, close to the 35, Holloway made the tackle, Vincent Holloway. 
There's Tomlinson, 13 carries, 143 yards, the 68-yarder for the score. Tomlinson with four 200-plus yard games this year, and now 12 straight 100-yard-plus games. Of course, going back to the last season, first and 10, the ball at the 34. In trouble. Brought down at his own 25, maybe 26 yard line. Minson Holloway. Boy, is this guy a story. A senior from El Paso. An original walk on. His 10th sack of the year. I tell you, this young man knows how to get to the quarterback when he got 10 and a half sacks on this one. Good job coming around the corner, finding the quarterback. A lot of play action pass from TCU when they set it up for that running game with Lodanian Tomlinson. Turner maybe held on just a little bit too long, but really didn't have a chance to throw it because of Holloway getting the back field so fast. He's got 30 hurries of the quarterback this year. I mean, that just lets you know how often he is right there. Second and 18. Tomlinson can't get much as he hops back to the 25-yard line. And about the time you think one team of those get a little momentum, Gary, I was thinking, all right, TCU stops UTEP, they get it back, come back with it here, and then UTEP comes up with a big sack, and now it looks like the momentum's on the side of the Miners again as Kamar Jackson making the stop that time. Third down conversions today. The Frogs, 3 of 5, big one here, third and 19. Three wide outs to the top of the screen. The Sprinters looks that way and possibly changing the play. Thanks to Tomlinson. Got time. Going deep. Got a man at the 30. The 10. Touchdown, TCU. And TCU up 20 to 7. Well, take a look at the top of your screen. In the slot there, number 13, Latier's Dunbar. He's going to get behind Jackson. Does a nice job of running. The ball is just thrown perfectly. Latier's Dunbar doesn't even break stride. The ball is right where it needs to be, Bill. Take a part Cedric James as he skids into the end zone. And James, a 75 yarder. And the kick after by Kaleki, and it is good as well. Well, there's your momentum swing as TCU with printers going 75 yards to James and a score. Give you a couple looks here at James' second touchdown reception of the year, Gary. Well, when the quarterback has enough time to throw the football like to do here, watch the blocking. The line does a great job giving him enough time to throw the football. I tell you, he just lays it out there, and Cedric James runs right past the defense. Excellent throw. Good job of running to the open area. The young man has a, has a nice, easy touchdown for the Frogs. James, the 75-yard TD catch to cap off the five-play drive and printers his longest career TD pass. The kickoff, and Utah slipping and sliding a bit. The turf is still a little wet. Remember yesterday, a little soft. And TCU makes him pay for it on that return. And it'll be first and ten for the Miners. And now the Miners, you're down 14 to the nation's top defensive team. Uh, 7.51 to go in the first quarter. They need them nothing else. Get their defense off the field for a little bit and establish a little bit of consistency offensively. Well, that was one of the things that Gary Nord talked about was that they needed to have some consistency. Go ahead and get a few first downs. Don't want to score right away. Don't want to score too quickly. You want to sustain the drive and keep, keep their offense off the field. They haven't accomplished much of that here late in the first quarter, Bill, or here in the second. See the yardage battle all TCU, of course, the first down carry by UTEP goes to Cleveland, and he gets to the 15. You get a 75-yard TD pass and a 68-yard run, you're going to win that yardage battle, but they have uh, taken control of this one just all of a sudden-like. And that was a third and 19, I believe. 
Now, if there's any question whether or not TCU is going to come in here and play and play hard, already have a bowl bid, already accepted there, were they really interested in trying to, to finish this season out on a winning note? No, there's a lot of evidence today that they're ready to play. Second down and seven for the 15 for the Miners. Down two touchdowns now. Perez hands it off and no go that time for Roban Cleveland. Loose ball and TCU's got it. Cleveland got stopped. The ball popped loose. Frogs have it. First and goal to go. And Bear made the tackle. Let to see who the recovery was made by. Shannon Brazil, I believe, came up with the football. Perez and the Miners a little shot. Watch the top of your screen here. Just going to be an easy handoff inside. He tries to get around the corner. The defense stacks him up, and Brazil is there. The pick Shobel up the knocks it loose, I believe, Shobel, Gary. Yeah, knocked it out of there. Aaron Schoedl, number 14, he knocks it out, and Brazil comes up with a big play. Gordon, the Miners trying to avoid the knockout here, possibly. As TCU lined up first and goal from the eight-yard line. And the turnover battle becoming big. Printers rolls out. Got a man. It's complete to the five. Touchdown. Purcell. Chad Purcell. The Frogs now with a 27 to 7 lead. Printers with a pair of touchdown passes after Tomlinson's long run got him on the board to start with. And Purcell and Lane, the two fullbacks, each have a score. Again, they lay game for the point after. One second after the last score, they punch it in again. Just going to take the fullback, get him out in the flat. Casey Printers leads him. Purcell has one man to beat. he go ahead and break the tackle. Good job, good score. Eight yards, Eight yards on the play. It's a little play action fake. Everybody's got to worry about Tomlinson, who has to block on the play, and Casey Printers leads it out there to his fullback. Purcell's first touchdown of the year, Bill. And Purcell, a happy guy, is now 28 to 7. Game following the fumble. Remember, UTEP's only score came on the fumble recovery, or following the fumble recovery. And now, TCU answers first play after that. And boy, you, you just got to be impressed with TCU play calling and everything else. Did you get it back? You think of Tomlinson again? No. Come out here, toss it. They had the bomb on the third and 19 for the TD. And now to kick it off. Hey, Lakey, long kick to the five. And Singleton is stopped at the 22-yard line. And UTEP... Down 28 to 7. And it'll be first and 10 from their own 22 yard line as Perez, a word before he heads back onto the field. Well, Patrick Higgins, the offense coordinator with Gary Nord for UTEP. They need to find some way to get this offense on track, find something that's going to work for him. Wouldn't be surprised to see them go with the wide receiver screen, what they call the jailhouse screen, throw it out to the wide receiver. It's a play behind the line of scrimmage, almost like a, a pitch play, and see if they can make that play work for him. Perez in trouble again, scrambling, unloads it, completes it, and fortunate to get, looked like he was going to throw it away and then found a receiver, and I think it was to Ray. Yeah, there's a look at Alan Ray and took him out of a hole and makes it second about four. A lot of pressure up inside, and Rocky Perez has to get out of the pocket. He actually wants to get his tight end behind the linebackers in the middle of the field, but he finds Ray on the sideline who works back to the quarterback. Good job of making something out of nothing that time by the quarterback. 
Gray had a couple of receptions last week for 38 yards. His best game was four for 65 in the opener against Oklahoma. Here he sets up second and four at the 29. As Perez out of the shotgun, quickly comes to Ray again, trying to turn the corner. 40, got a first down, and knocked down at the 43-yard line. Aaron Schobel, a penalty maybe on the play. Let's see, there's the call. It's going to be against TCU. be a personal foul penalty bill personal foul roughing the passer on the defense 15 from the end of the run and a down late hit called on Schobel and we'll take a look maybe we can see it here well, watch the top right of your screen here as you can see the pressure come in on the quarterback and boom it's going to be a big hit there right after the ball is thrown So Schobel, the awards candidate here, and sometimes a little bit too exuberant. But for UTEP, gives them the football now at the TCU 42. First and 10, 543 and counting here in the first half. 28 to seven frogs. Perez again out of the shotgun. Going to keep it, flag is thrown as he dives across the 40 to the 39, and Curtis Fuller made the tackle. Another flag down here, probably a procedure penalty or an offside. The near line job is just calling that penalty, Bill. Ran against the Miners this time. UTEP coming in. Teams have been about the same penalty-wise. Both average around seven penalties for 65, 67 yards a game. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So first and 15 now for UTEP. UTEP got on the board first on the touchdown pass to Mays following the fumble recovery. And since then, it's been all TCU. Tomlinson for a 68-yard run. Lane on a short run, and then a pair of TD passes from Casey Printers. One of 75 yards. Then following another fumble return, one to Purcell for four yards. James took the long one. Here's Perez, first and 15. Going down the middle. Just overthrowing the intended receiver. Trying to get it to Austin. Sherman Austin, a sophomore from Los Angeles. Fuller was covering him on the play. And they put Austin in the slot that time, line him up as a receiver, and he gets behind the defense. Rocky Perez just leads him a little bit too far. See at the top of your screen there, Austin, number three. He's going to get behind the safety, inside behind him. The ball is just out there a little bit too far, and would have been a big play for the Miners. who's been completing at 61% this year, 57 in his career. He's had a couple wide open today that just hadn't been able to connect with. Again, going for it, and it's intercepted this time at the 45, 40. Bear takes it down to the 31-yard line. Perez may have tried to force that one. I don't think he ever saw Bear. And Chad Bear comes up with his first interception of the year. Bill, he's trying to go to his big tight end, Brian Natkin, on the little wheel route. The tight end works up the field and tries to work back to the middle, but Bear stepped in front of the throw that time, and as you said, Rocky Perez doesn't even see him. You see Bear come across in front of Natkin, number 87, who's on the left of your screen, and then picks up a good return here after the interception. And TCU, first and 10 at the 34-yard line. The fake to Tomlinson. The dunk now incomplete intended for Lane out of the backfield. And for the Frogs, show a little bit of everything on offense. A lot of things here going on in this football game. I tell you, Casey, Casey Printers tries to get a complete completion there. But Rocky Perez, he doesn't see the linebacker Bear who has the tight end in coverage. I think he thought that Matkin was going to come across more, but he stopped. And quarterback anticipate him getting there. And Rocky Perez had a little action of his own there. 
second and 10 at the 34 for TCU with a 28 to 7. Play action again. Printers. And this is complete to Purcell as he slides to make the grab at the 23 yard line. So Chad Purcell stopped by Walker. Bill Chad Purcell's had the ball in his hands three times today. He's a senior fullback. Get a chance to play here in his last game at TCU here at the home stadium. He's had one run, a couple of receptions, one for a touchdown. This is your second one here. It's just a wheel route coming out behind the defense and open enough. The quarterback delivers it to him. Catch number two. First and ten at the 17 now. Lane in motion to the top of your screen. Tomlinson across the 15. And Tomlinson had the huge first quarter. And Williams making the tackle here. He really hadn't had many carries here in the second period. I feel kind of strange, Bill. You've gone about <laughs> 10 minutes and had to mention his name. Yeah. <laughs> Tomlinson, more than 125 carries more than any other runner in the whack this year so the 310 coming in second and six at the 13 now printers on the option now he pitches tomlinson dives to near the first down marker had to get to the seven i think he made that walker covering on the play Printer's showing you some of his athleticism. Oh, I think Printer's made about six fakes on that play as far as when he's going to pitch the football. Watch him as he works down the line of scrimmage here. He's going to have a lead blocker. He knows he's got his, his A man behind him. That's Thomerson. There's the fake one, fake two, fake three. Hey, I'm going to throw it to him this time and let Thomerson pick up the eight yards. Almost ten, I think, Bill. Maybe a, maybe a first down. And a measure. Just short, it looks like. That's what I thought as he went to the sideline. Let's see what they need. It's kind of interesting, Coach Fran Jones told us yesterday that all the talk about Tomlinson and the people forgot the printers that you know, sometimes he hasn't been great, but he said, Gary, they forget this guy is a true sophomore and there's a lot more to this than just handing off to LT. <laughs> Well, their offense, 68% of it, they run the football. And 63% of the times that they have run the football, Adanian Thompson is the one carrying the football for them. Printers, he said, is very pleased with his development as a quarterback. Tomlinson, third and one. Will he get it here? Flags are thrown. Was it the play clock? Save motion some sort against the shoulder. That shoulder that time might have been And you hear Dennis Franchione want to call a timeout here, get his play in order to bring up a third and five and a half or so for the first down ball. Well, one of the reasons TCU has been so good under Coach Franchione and the turnaround that he has about completed here has been his attention to detail and you know that type of thing if anything frustrates him more than uh, anything here Franchione of course uh, one of the hottest names in college football is Dennis Franchione we asked him to comment on all the media buzz surrounding him and job possibilities you know, I always say there are only two kinds of coaches, those that people want and those that people don't want. And, and you always want to kind of stay in that uh, good category if you can. Um, it's, it's flattering when you hear your name mentioned that way, and, and I think that's positive. But uh, it gets very distracting and very discouraging because uh, I, I have not done anything to to maybe merit that other than just coach hard. Good French own, uh, certainly a hot name and it has in his contract here a number of schools that he may go without a buyout and Arizona State is one of those and they're looking for a head coach with Bruce Snyder being uh, let go out there. But Dennis saying, I just wish people would talk more about our football team. Let's finish the season. We'll address things then and carry on. He said, because way too much attention is paid to me, and, and our players are having another great season. And one thing he wants to make known is that, you know, after this game, win, lose, or draw, he's in there Sunday morning preparing for SMU next week. He just goes and coaches football. He's not worried about all the things outside of the game. The mention that has had not had any contact with Arizona State at this point. Third down and five from the 12-yard line following the timeout for the Frogs. 
Printer's got all day. Now it breaks down a bit. He keeps the football. Penalty flag thrown. He's to the five and dives across to the four-yard line. But a flag back at the 15 in the backfield. Holding the call. Three twenty-two to go in the half. Well, when your quarterback's scrambling around back there, you're trying to give him enough time to throw the football. Pretty good rush this time by TCU. Watch the left side of the screen. Ladanian Thomas makes the play, and the hold there is on the left side, number sixty on the left side. Coming across, it might have been David Bobo, the big tackle. The offense, ten yards from the spot of the foul, repeat third down. So you heard it, they'll repeat third down. Well, today, you would think this is just what TCU wants. They just need a big play. <laughs> well, it takes them out of that red area that they're so proficient in now, Bill. They're outside of, their, of that now at the 26-yard line. Third and 18 is the call. One receiver to the top, two to the bottom of your screen as Printers sets up in the shotgun. Tomlinson to his right, and he'll scatter as well. Printers got a man crossing at the 20, 15, and did not get the first down, but certainly put him back in great field goal territory, as that was Terran Williams. Williams out of Cypress Falls in the Houston area. Just his third reception of the year. A crossing route for Williams coming across the field. The quarterback waits for him to get there. And he throws a strike. He tries to outrun the defense, but comes a little bit short of the first down. And that'll bring on Chris Kalaki. Kalaki from Austin. And Kalaki, I should say, is 12 of 14 in field goals this year. His longest 46 yards. And the setup here is at the 17. And it'll be a 27-yard attempt. For Lackey, the kick is good. So TCU gets three more. And now 31-7. to seven. The Frogs rolling with still 2-10 to go in the half. To watch the flash right from the Dillon Dunson Jeff Minnie. So the interception sets up this three-point play, and TCU now up 31 to seven. I want to remind you, folks, that every week on Sunday mornings you can catch Cowboys Weekly. I'll be joined by Drew Pearson. That's nine o'clock here on Fox Sports Net tomorrow morning as the Cowboys get ready for the toughest six-game stretch in the NFL, going to Baltimore this week. We'll take a look at that, as well as review the victory over the Bengals and the roundtable on Cowboys Weekly tomorrow at 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Day. Look at Coach Francione. Can't find much to complain about this half. A lot of plays here defensively. They made some turnovers. They responded and had the big plays offensively. The run by Tomlinson early and then reception long for the score. Hey, those are things that can really set your offense apart. They've got a lot of production so far offensively, and the defense has played very, very well, shutting down the minors. And the kick as Singleton is deep, and Kalaki to boot it away. Turn to the 34 yard line. Josh Wheat, the return man, and UTEP will get it back just shy of their own 35-yard line. So the Miners, who came in here with already a share of the WAC title and having won seven straight, they've been stunned. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run, going to be a first down. Will certainly help UTEP and give them a shot here before the half. Well, they brought the, that huge following with them from El Paso and sold a ton of tickets down there. Folks got vocal as they got the lead, but they've been very quiet since then. Well, they've been quiet because they haven't got accomplished what they needed to going into this football game. The one thing they didn't want to do is create turnovers. And they wanted to keep the defense at TCU off balance. They really haven't accomplished that because they haven't got consistency in their running game, which leads to their play-action passing game, and also their, their slant passes that they like to run so well. They've just not been able to hit the receivers. 
Rios out of the shotgun. First and ten at midfield. Dodges one. Got a man, and it is complete at the 40 and a first down, UTEP. Making the reception, Tessier. Paul Tessier, who came over with 11 grams on the year. Charlie Owens covering for the Frogs. A rude hit there by Owens at the end of the play. Tessier spins around and takes a pretty good pop. Ott moving. First to take the 39. And complete to Mays, and he wheels out of bounds. Inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Kenneth Hillard making the tackle. Hillard taking the spot of Jason Goss starting cornerback who was lost a few games ago with the ACL injury. Bill, it looked like a simple play to Lee Mays on the outside, but you can see his athleticism. When he touches the football, he's explosive. Number seven at 6'3", 190 pounds for, for the Miners. He's just one of those rare receivers. I think he's got a lot of ability. 41 receptions coming in in his career for over 2,100 yards and a touchdown today. Perez in trouble on the third, the second down. Trying to advance it. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. We'll see here as the tackle is made. Aaron Schobel had him in his sights. Actually back there behind the quarterback and dove at him and missed. Rocky just ducked forward. He's got that innate sense of getting away from the rush. Good job of at least not making a, a bad loss. Third and four going for the touch. And off the hands of Mays. Hillard covering on the play. Well, Rocky's been a little bit long all day, Bill, on his passes. That one's just a little bit up on the outstretched hands of Mays. You see here the ball's going to come down. Mays only puts up one hand to try to catch the ball. Maybe if he went with two, he might have had another chance of that. Gets away from the defender at the line of scrimmage and runs past him with his 4-3 speed. The ball is there. Mm -hmm. They're going to great catch. They're going for the first down here on fourth and four with 1.16 to go in the half. Down 31 to 7. Perez and whistled before he threw that ball and the flag's thrown. Pass intended for Napkin. Let's see what they come up with here as a prior to the snap. Ball start on the offense, five yards penalty, you see four times. Ball three on the fourth and eight or nine now, Bill. I guess I don't think anything different here for Gary Nord. He just goes ahead and goes for it down 31 to 7. Hey, you want to make something happen here late in the second quarter going into halftime, at least have a chance to respond. Put some points on the board. It might swing a little bit of the man your way. Well, at this point, you better keep TG's offense off the field. He's <laughs> electrifying as they have been. Fourth and nine. Number 38. Perez. Knows he's got to throw it. Does an incomplete. And Perez under pressure. Good coverage in the secondary. Trying to find deep man. And now that's Matkin. They're trying to throw it to Matkin on the outside, Bill. The tight end worked all the way across the field. Credit the coverage that time by TCU. Everybody locked up very well. Coverage was there. It was excellent. I'll tell you what TCU is doing very well today, Bill, is they're, they're getting pressure on Rocky Perez with a four-man rush. They're not really blitzing. They're dropping back into coverage. They're double. They're combo coverage into the outside with little man coverage from the inside. They have two people on that kid most of the time. On the inside of the field, he only has a single coverage when he gets outside. Aaron Schobel led the way that time. And... First to ten for TCU as they get the ball after downs. And Tomlinson wrong without it. Loose football. And the Miners have got it right back. I believe Derek Walker caused the fumble and recovering the football. Come all high. Sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. And Tomlinson. Looked like he was set to make for another long run here, Bill. He has the outside. Everything is taken care of for him there. He's slinging the ball around a little bit. The ball is pulled down that, there by... You can see he made the, the, the contact on it, but High comes up with it. Walker, number 48, does a good job of just getting on Ladanian's arm and pops the ball out. Yeah, and even Tomlinson kind of shaking his head almost looked like, how did that happen? And we couldn't get a good shot there of exactly what he did with it. But UTEP's got it back. 
across the middle and incomplete intended for Napkin. And he was popped good again in the secondary by Fuller. Yeah, that's the combo coverage I'm talking about. They're having someone take care of him short on the outside, and then the inside, the quarterback is, excuse me, the safety's there inside. Rocky Press tries to throw a strike here, gets it in there, but good job and good break in the secondary. Pretty good pop there. Napkin's going to make most of those. Job by Curtis Fuller there. He's strong at free safety. He's the third leading tackler on the team and a pretty good hitter as well. 245 tackles for his career coming in. Second and 10 at the 43 now for the Miners. 52 seconds to go in the half. And again, looking for Natkin, but Perez under pressure. Slinkard was covering on Natkin. Well, you know, you talked about it earlier. Rocky Perez, 61% this year throwing the football and on his completion percentage. Nothing near that today. A lot of problems here is connecting with his receivers. Rocky Perez is kind of having a rocky start of this football game. Now inside a minute, 50 seconds to go, third and 10 from the 43-yard line. Perez completes this at the 40 and the 40 to the 38, and then stepping out of bounds that time, Mays. Hillard was covering on the play. And he was 9 of 25 for 81 yards prior to that. So gives you an idea of a guy that comes in with uh, 200, pa 200 yard passing games have this been the norm. And he has really been pressured to death. Fourth down now and five for Utah. They're at the 38 yard line. On the shotgun, no other backs. Perez. Incomplete, intended for Natkin. And Fuller was again the man. Well, these defensive backs for TCU, Bill, they're doing a good job of breaking on the football, breaking on the throw. They must know something about Rocky Perez when he's delivering the football. Look at the spread here. We're going to try to bring a corner blitz, but everybody matches up real well. One, two, three. You see him right around the screen there. Everybody has their man. Good job that time by Fuller coming up and breaking the play up. First and 10 at the 39-yard line, and that's where TCU will get it back as Fuller and the boys have done a nice job in the secondary for the Frogs. And TCU will just down the football here and be glad to go in with a 31-7 halftime lead. UTEP's got some timeouts, but there's not much reason to use them in this situation, so... Gary Nord's really got to be frustrated to get the football back again and then not be able to get anything either. So second down and 13 as Printers downs it, and that ends the first half. Wow, what a half for TCU. Tomlinson got it going for the Frogs with his 68-yard touchdown run with a point after that tied the game after UTEP had jumped out to a 7-0 lead. And then Lane, James, Purcell, all getting touchdowns. And Kaylaki, a field goal to cap it off at 31 to 7 at the half. And let's go down to Kevin Eschenfelder with Coach Francione. All right, thank you, Doug. I told you an hour ago that you were going to put 31 points on the board. Would you believe me the way the defense has started this one? Well, not the way we started there. It looked a little ugly at first. The offense has been very good. The defense has been extremely solid. Uh, what, did, what changes do you make in the second half? Well, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, take care of the football. We had two turnovers that half that's not like our football team and I don't I don't think they can score a lot of points on our defense unless we lay the ball on our side of the ground or throw interceptions on our side of the 50 or, or throw interceptions on our side of the 50. All right good luck in the second half. Coach. All right 31 unanswered for the Horned Frogs. Bill Land back upstairs to you. Thanks Kevin. Thanks to Coach Franchione for stopping by and got to be happy as the Frogs trying to get a share of the conference title. First up they got to beat UTEP and so far so good it's TCU. 31, UTEP Miners, 7, halftime activities coming up on Fox Sports. 31-7, the halftime score back down on the field. Coach Ford, 
Well, it's been a batter of big plays that have hurt you in the first half. What adjustments do you make to try to get things going offensively in the second? Well, the first of all, you can't turn the ball over against a good football team like this. And then we haven't been throwing and catching very well. We we can do a lot better in that area, but uh, they have a good football team, but we're going to try to come back and uh, throw and catch and execute a little bit better. Sure, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Gary Nord visiting with us down here on the field. Bill Land, I take it back upstairs. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. Certainly a tough task ahead for Rocky Perez and the UTEP Miami trailing here at the half and Gary uh, be interesting to see what they come up with because not a lot of options against TCU well their offense has just been stymied the TCU defense has played very very well Rocky Perez in the first half 10 of 27 you know coach Nord talked about they have to throw and catch well not getting that accomplished today Bill it started off okay let's take a look at some of the highlights and you kept getting on the board first you got off of the turnover a little turnover here the defense does a good job of picking it up and the offense takes care of business hey when they have things happen their way good plays can happen and you see the good athletic catch here by Mays in the corner of the end zone. UTEP goes up early. And uh, he's you had an answer in the name of LT. Well, Danian Tomlinson shows why he's one of the best backs in the country. Just breaking tackles, waiting and setting up the run there. And it's a nice, easy 68-yard jump for Ladanian for the touchdown. That tied it up. Then on the next drive, a couple of more good runs by Tomlinson. And once you start feeding him, everything else opens up. I think he gets better as the game goes on. And actually, you know, when you run the football as well as they do, their play-action passing game works a lot better. Hey, go ahead and hand it off to your big fullback inside because everyone is keying on LT. George Lane with the score there. And here's a throw late in the game. Casey Printers for the score. Big play there on the passing game as well. So things seem to be working for the offense and defense. I tell you, they're just swarming to the football, stopping. UTEP from running the football effectively and also passing the ball. It's a big day offensively for them, but defensively. And now the other fullback, Purcell, gets a, gets a touchdown and get into the action as well. And UTEP trying to come back, going through the air at the end of the half. Bears there for the interception and uh, actually got it back again and couldn't do anything with it. But finally, a TCU has to settle for a field goal, and uh, they are rolling at 31-7 to here as we get ready to start the second half. And we're going to send it back down to... Kevin Eschenfeld, and we'll have a chance to take a look then at some of the other numbers here statistically here. But the big one is 31-7 at the half, and let's send it back down to Kevin. Yeah, guys, of course, this is the final home game of the season for TCU. They've got 26 seniors on this team. They have not lost since the opener last year back in 1999 against Arizona. They've won 10 straight on this field. And of those 26 seniors, LaDainian Tomlinson, the guy talking about it, he told his coach Dennis Francione, hey, guys, we will not walk off this field losers for the final time so far living up to what they say 31-7 at halftime bill back upstairs thanks kevin we'll take a look at some of the numbers here other than lt and you see rushing 137 to 19 gary uh and utep only throwing for 86 yards and just struggling overall offensively, even though the first down is the only thing that's very close. Well, 60% of the yardage this year for UTEP has been via the air, and they're only getting 86 yards through the, in the first half. That's just not the kind of production that Gary Nord would like to have. So they've got to find a way to get their offensive consistency working here in the second half. And back to the live action. We're set for the kickoff, and it comes to UTEP, 10, and out to the 22-yard line, and that's where the Miners will get the ball to start things off here in the second half. Just to see how Rocky Perez responds, Bill, after a shaky first half. A lot of the balls that he threw sailed on him a little bit. What I mean by that is they were just a little bit further thrown than he needed to to get a, get a completion or at least have his receivers get a hand on it. See if he finds a way to settle down and throw a little ball, some balls on target. One of the key plays that UTEP runs is a wide receiver screen. They only attempted it one time in the first half. That was the first play of the ball game. Couldn't be surprised to see him try to get some settling plays for the quarterback here starting out. And on first to 10 from the 22-yard line, here's Mays. He comes around with it and stayed in bounds. Oh, he stepped out. TCU thought the play was dead, or some of the defenders for the Frogs. And Mays stepped out of bounds through the 32. I think he may have the first down, though, Gary. Well, Lee Mays, with his speed, comes around on the wide receiver reverse. He's coming in motion towards the line of scrimmage. The quarterback actually had a tough time pulling that one down. A little shotgun snap pulls it down and hands off to Mays, who makes a... About nine, nine and a half here, Bill, on that first down. Even the 
ball on the ground, and the first down and more. Watch out, diving across the 45 is Sherman Austin. Chad Bear makes the tackle. Well, a couple of positive plays for the Miners coming out here, Bill. The reverse, not cold for those guys, I tell you. But the offense is trying to warm up themselves. They try to get out here and run a little reverse. A little trickery, something that gets your offense loose enough and then get a first down inside with your tailback. Now the offense is starting to click a little bit, almost to the 50-yard line. First and 10 of the 47, in fact, for UTEP. Perez out of the shotgun. Steps up, drills it across the 50. Joey Knapp, the receiver, to the 48-yard line of TCU. Well, it's a fast strike offense. They like to spread the field. They'll take their personnel groups, a lot of different groups out there. By the time they spread one of the tight ends out into the slot, and Rocky Perez does a nice job of reading the defense and getting it in there on target. Second and five from the 48-yard line. Straight ahead with flags everywhere. Austin again carrying the football. Ashley made the tackle. You see Brazil slow to get up there 41. Let's find out the call. The offsides against the defense. The defensive tackle jumped inside. I think it might have been Sean Ward, the number 95. He's back in the game now, Bill. He didn't start the ball game because of the unsportsmanlike conduct that only had a week ago in the ball game. Wortham, another one of the seniors on this team, 304 pounder from San Antonio, from Alamo Heights. And he's had 11 tackles for loss this year. How pleasing! It will be a first count. How pleasing is that to Gary Nord? He goes, no, wait a minute. Here comes this guy. He's fresh. Yeah, he, he's ready to go. He's, he's really ready. To go. A lot of gas in this tank. First to 10 at the 43 of TCU. Utah's opening drive, second half, trying to get something going. Perez again. Almost picked off. Diving attempt, Charlie Owens. Intended for Knapp. Charlie's played a pretty good game, Bill. He's had a lot of contact plays, and now here in the passing game, he's got Knapp man-to-man -man at the top of your screen there left. He's underneath him, goes underneath for the interception, just doesn't come down with it. Good job of reading the quarterback, reading the delivery of the football, and an excellent break on it. Second and 10 at the 43. Perez under center this time. Goes back and hands it off. And Austin, again, the ball carry, came in with 384 yards on 96 carries and in a 4.0 average. Worthen made the tackle that time on Austin out of Los Angeles, Lincoln High School. Well, you've got to mix it up a little bit, Bill. You've got to run the ball and throw the ball. When you do a play-action passing game, and you have to give your quarterback at least a chance to use those space to his advantage by running the football. A couple of good runs here by uh, UTEP in the second half. Third and seven to look into Napkin, who they'd split way out, and he could not come up with it. Ball behind him a bit. And that's that wide receiver screen I was talking about earlier. They just chose to throw it to Napkin, the tight end, split him out there, and let Rocky throw it out to his big tight end. The ball sailed on it as well. So fourth down and seven now for UTEP. And as everything has kind of been a hurry up, it hadn't been a no huddle, but it's been a hurry up. Very no one realizing when you're down in this situation, you do need to hurry up offensively. They're going to go for it here on fourth and seven from the 40. Perez in trouble, flags, and they'll stop the play. Ball started on the offense. Five-yard penalty. We can fourth down. And now they'll send on the punting unit after this uh, mishap. Take a look at the type of screen. The left tackle just gets a little bit of a lean out there, and now it's going to force Gary Noor to bring his punt unit on and be in fourth and 12 instead of a fourth and seven situation. Bomaligi, I believe, and now it brings on Glenn Beard. See his work. Beal is back on his own 10. Fake. Beard throws it. Incomplete. Had a man open. Just couldn't connect as Beard trying to hit Jackson. Kamar Jackson. 
And TCU will get it back. Well, TCU's not in their punt return. Actually, they're in a punt safe. Their defense is out there. They know that they're going to try to do something here, just a poor throw the time. Otherwise, it could have been a first down. Punter says, you know, I got a chance to throw something here, but uh, it's not a good toss. So Bishop, for the beard, unable to uh, come up with a five sports standout in high school. So good enough athlete to uh, certainly work on something like that. Good Gary Norlow credit. Tried something different instead of just blatantly coming out and letting them know they're going to go for it. Printers now. He's making a going for it on first down. Complete the 30. And down near the 25-yard line as TCU going through the air now. Flag on the play. Well, take a look here. You're going to have all these defenders up here looking to stop the run to number five right there, and they all they all bite on it. Casey Printer does a good job of getting it out. It's that Stanley Moss making the reception. Moss comes up for the reception. Jackson was covering on the play. And an unsportsmanlike conduct. Is that what I just heard? On the offense. Well, there's two times now today that TCU has gotten a big play and a big first down, and then post-possession, or post-play, they have a personal foul penalty called against them, so it brings it back first down, but still moving the chains in a first down. And Moss, his first reception of the year for TCU. First today is also had Purcell with his first TD. Tomlinson. Stopped at the 40-yard line by Derek Walker. Well, this UTEP defense bill is keying on number five, and Walker's done a pretty good job of that himself. And from the linebacker spot that he's playing, you got to have a good pace on this guy to still use it to cut back to his advantage. He's done it very well early in the, in the ball game, and I don't think he's even got to get a win here in the second half. Second and nine at the 40. Tomlinson, a couple of the 40, 39, maybe 38. See where they mark the football. As Samuel Clark made the tackle, junior from San Antonio out of Jay High School. Eleven thirty-four ticking here in the third quarter. TCU up 31-7, as it was at the half. As you talk about a bill, UTEP and their offense is on the field. They're trying to move it a lot faster to get the plays called. Watch TCU bring the play clock down all the way until they snap it. Play action to Tomlinson. Printer's in trouble. Escapes one. Still rolling. And incomplete. And a pop made at the 23-yard line. You see Printer slow to get up as well. Big hits everywhere. That was Clemens in the secondary on Dunbar, the intended receiver. Casey Printer, the pressure on. Yeah, Bill Casey Printer, the sophomore quarterback, does a good job here of eluding the pressure. He throws the strike, but I'll tell you, Clemens, who does a good job of breaking up on the throw here, watch number two come up and get behind the receiver and then put his right hand out and knock the ball away at the last second. Good job closing on the receiver on a big hit when you get there. Fourth down and seven and a field goal attempt for Kalaki of 56 yards. It would be a punt rather as they show a little bit of a field goal attempt and now they're a little trickery and he deadens it. Did it go to the goal line? It's going to be a touchback. Kalaki setting up like it was going to be a 56-yarder with a man in hold position and then puts the punt off and almost put it inside the one. Great effort that time by Chris Kalaki. Brazil, of course, normally their punter, although Kalaki has punted now four times this year. Didn't quite make it. Stay with us. 31 7 TCU, 11 to go in the third. TCU with a 31 7 lead over UTEP. Welcome back. Fox Sports Net, College Football Saturday here in Fort Worth. 
up next in our college football Saturday action for you. We'll move it out west to the Pac-10, where Rick Neuheisel's Washington Huskies ranked number six in the country. Bragging rights in the Apple Cup as they take on the Cougars of Washington State. That's 3.30 Pacific, 5.30 Central, immediately following this one here in Fort Worth. UTEP for the football, first to 10 for the 20. Perez in trouble again. And Mays made the catch, but was out of bounds. Wow, that looked like it was a catch from the near sideline. Until you recovered. Watch your press do a dart there to the sideline to number seven, Lee Mays. You watch the top of your screen. He's going to go to the sideline, and the ball is going to deliver there. Does he make the catch while he's inbounds? I think he does, guys. That's a catch. Maybe ruled no control at the point. Well, actually, the ball is dropped. It is incomplete. He knocked it out of his hand. The, uh, the line judge is right there saying it was incomplete pass. Second and ten from the 20. They run the football this time with Porter. And Chris to the 24. Aaron Schobel makes the tackle. Schobel. One of 26 seniors saying goodbye at Amon Carter Stadium today. And what a performance their defense has put on. And you see he started 43 straight games. Third and six here at the 24. Perez going deep. Got a man and complete at the TCU 40. A leaping grab by Joey Now. And that gets the UTEP crowd. So many of them that have made the trip, whether it be by bus or air, and if they go by air on this one. Well, Rocky Perez, he checks the entire field. One, two, three, four. He sees Joey get behind. Owens back there. He does a good job of jumping up and catching the football. Charlie Owens never saw the ball. All he could play was the, the catch afterwards. Good job by Rocky. Finding the open receiver and throwing it to a place where he can make the grab. Knapp comes up with the big play, and it's a first down. Now the pitch back to Perez. He's in trouble. He got sacked. A loss on the play. As Maiden is there, Terrence Maiden, six-foot senior out of Dallas Carter High School. Maiden getting his second sack of the year. That's just an effort play that time. You have to continue to get all the way to the quarterback. You never know when the play is going to be over. Maiden's coming from the top of your screen. A lot of pressure there. Just grabs him by the foot and works until he gets him to the ground. Kind of a hog tie. Not much there either. As Perez has stopped Hill making the tackle. There's no fooling Joe Hill on that play. A quarterback draw right up the middle of the field, and he just plays off the block and swallows Rocky Perez. And now a third and long for Perez and the Miners. Third and 16 from their 46 with 853 in county. Perez back to pass again. Incomplete. Good coverage on Knapp that time of the secondary. Three had circled him. Slinkert was there. Cody, senior from Grandview, Texas, coming up with a deflection. Take a look at the top of your screen. Cody Slinkert's going to come from the inside out and make a nice play on the football. Good job. He's got his right hand around on it. Pretty good pop on Joey Knapp there as well. bring on Glenn Beard to kick it away again for UTEP. So no scoring so far here in the third quarter. UTEP trailing 31 to 7. Boots this one deep and it goes into the end zone and it'll come out to the 20 on the touchback. And a penalty flag is thrown. Let's see. Uh, as we'll wait for the ruling here just a second. been a lot of uh, late flags here in this game today. Eight twenty-eight to go. And now they talk 
knock it over. There might be, uh, I think it, uh, for UTEP, it was Dornabus might have gotten into it with a TCU player. They may be handing out a pair here. That's going to be against, uh, against TCU. Well, and now the offense starting to come on for TCU. They're saying hold everything. There's the penalty situation today. You TCU, that certainly won't please Dennis Franchione. With 10 for 107 yards. Well, at this point, he seems a little bit amused as just exactly what is going on. We're going to see the call here, Bill. With Dead ball. <laughs> <laughs> they heard you, Gary. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think what happened is the returner waved for a fair catch, and then he went and blocked. And that's again, that's an unsportsmanlike penalty, conduct penalty, and that's maybe what they're calling against the Frogs. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. The penalty will be in from the twelve to the ten yard line. Bill, I'm a, uh, I hope you're better at reading lips than I am. <laughs> there we go. Dead ball. He called a fair catch at the end of the mask. The end, number 20. That was a uh, hand to the face mask at the end of the play. And for TCU, that was Greg Walls going at it there. So it sets TCU instead of at the 20. They're going to be at the 10-yard line, first and 10. Printers hands it off to Lane. Not much there. TCU's case. They're looking at us. We got 90 yards, lots of clock. Let's see if we can have a nice long drive here. Punch another touchdown in and pretty much put this one away in the third period. Yeah, a good long score here would be good for their offense. And for UTEP, their defense, they need to make a play. They need to stop this offense down here in this territory. Make them force the force punt or get a turnover and get the ball back to your offense. Watch out, 20, he'll be gone if he beats one, 50, Tomlinson, oh my goodness, 89 yards. There is a penalty flag, you saw Tomlinson's reaction. 89-yard touchdown run is probably coming back. That matched last year when he had an 89-yarder is his longest. That's the most important thing. Ladanian Tomlinson reads the cutback very well, and nobody even touches him. One defender tried to dive at him, but he just went right over the top of him. Look at the speed this young man possesses. Outruns the entire UTEP secondary. And you see Tomlinson had to wait to see. Turn around, saw that flag back there. thought, oh, no. But it'll count. 89 yards for Tomlinson. You see his career touchdowns now at 52. Now the point after coming up, and this is going to be a 35-yard point after attempt by Kalaki. Of course, he's an excellent field goal kicker. He doesn't get this one, though. So the touchdown by Tomlinson, the miss on the extra point attempt. But Tomlinson continues to roll as do the Frogs. 37 seconds. Tomlinson's 89 yard run gives him 240 yards rushing today. And he continues to make different records. Now is 10th on the NCAA's all time rushing chart. And Tomlinson is now over 5,000 for his career. He needed 216 today 
to break the 5,000 career mark and did that on that run as well. But back to the action here. Singleton stopped at the 15, but they're going to say forward motion stop near the 18-yard line, and that's where UTEP will get the football. Bill Adanian Tomlinson has something he can achieve. Uh, they just jumped into the 5,000-yard club for his career after that rush, and he has a chance to be one of only two players to have two 2,000-yard seasons back-to-back -back and then also into the 5,000-yard club, and that's with, with Ricky Williams of uh, Texas. You can see what he's done over the last couple of games. And... 480 yards and now 5,024 yards for his career. Utah Porter and he has stopped with a 15 a loss on the play as Chris is tripped up by Chad Bear. Good job by the linebacker inside. Bear getting behind the line of scrimmage and pulling him down from behind. It was strung out very well by the defensive front. Bear cleans up for an easy tackle behind the line. Second and 13, the ball on the 15 with a 37 to 7. And UTEP, again, with the three wide outs to the near side, one to the top of your screen, and Perez going to neck, and he breaks the tackle here, and may have the first down near the 28-yard line. Could be a little shy, it looks like. Terrell made the tackle. Well, that's only Brian Atkins' third catch of the game, Bill. A week ago, he had eight catches against Rice for 110 yards. Big tight end is the leading receiver, tight end receiver in the country coming into the football game. He had 59 grabs coming into the game. Third down and one. Timeout called by Perez and the Miners, and then a flag is thrown. <laughs> After he signaled the timeout, are they calling delay a game before he called the timeout? A substitution infraction, and that must have been what Perez noticed, and he called the timeout, and that must be why Nord is saying, wait a minute, if we actually called the timeout before the play has been snapped, that's why the flag. They're not going to enforce the timeout. They're going to have to go let them play now, Bill. So it's going to bring up the third down at five or six. So big difference for you, Tim. Yeah. Good news, you don't use a timeout. Bad news, it's still third and six now. It's been a good day for Coach Nord and the Miners. They got off to the good start. The 7-0 lead after the turnover. And May is the TD catch. It's been all frog since then. 31-7 at the half. And the Tomlinson 89 yard run to make it 37. Napkin upended at the 28. Flag is thrown in the backfield. Fuller made the tackle on Napkin. I don't know if he had the first down. That's probably a measure. But considering what happened in the backfield, I think it's going to be. Uh, no doubt about it. Chad Bear, they're going to get him from roughing the quarterback, coming through there on the blitz and just continuing where he, after the quarterback throws the football. This is the second penalty they've had of like this today for TCU, Bill. Get in the quarterback late after the throw. Watch Bear come through here, and he's going to run past it, take a couple of steps, and go ahead and hit the quarterback. The other end of it, Fuller does a good job of hitting that to the tight end. Good contact there, but it was a first down on the catch, and they're going to get more with the penalty of the late hit. And Gary, that what some fans may not understand, the official's talking to both sides back there. So it's not like a, an on-rushing lineman isn't aware when the quarterback is clear. Oh, well, when he steps up and throws the football and you're taking two more steps, that's definitely a penalty on the defender. You have to somewhat protect that quarterback. He's vulnerable back there. You know, I, I've got a defensive background. I like to get the quarterback, <laughs> but uh, in those situations, you need to protect that young man. First and 10 at the 43 now for the Miners. Play action. Perez. Complete to Napkin. And that'll be a first down at the 45 yard line of the Horn Frogs. Russell, Gary covering. Napkin on the reception. Good job that time working the tight end. He's at the top of the screen on the right side of the screen. Going to work to the flat. Quarterback just going to zip it out there to him to the outside. Let him go down and get the grab. First and 
10 on the 45-yard line now. Perez rolls to the right, pass blocked, and nearly picked off as Owens coming out. Well, he just tried what's called a naked boot that time, just roll the quarterback out without a lead blocker, and you have the defender there, you play a monkey in the middle, you got the defensive end, you're going to watch the top of your screen, it's naked, nobody's there, but watch the defender, he's right in the middle, and if he gets his hand up, he makes the play, but if he doesn't, it's going to be an easy toss over the top to the tight end who's right behind him. Owens with the big play for the Frogs that time, and now second and ten for UTEP, 5.26 remaining here in the third period. Perez hands it off. A couple that time for Rovan Cleveland. Hilliard made the tackle for TCU. Cleveland, venture freshman. Bill coming into this ball game, the Miners knew they had to had their work cut out from going against the number one defense in the country, number one in total defense, and more importantly, number one in scoring defense, allowing only nine and a half points a ball game. This TCU defense all year has just been superlative. Yeah, and consider the only touchdown came after a turnover, so they had the short drive to get that one. Third and seven. And a pass to Napkin. He was popped just at the moment of uh, coming down with it. Russell Gary with the hit. Perez really drilled him with a hard throw and napkin. Hit hard. Perez now 15 of 37. 16 of 37. He drills this ball in the napkin here. Watch the left side of your screen. He's going to just drop it in there. Napkin has it in his hand. Just doesn't pull it down. He knows the contact count for the defenders. They've been hitting him all day after he catches the football. He knows he let one get away there. Natkin last year, 59 catches, 648 yards. This year, coming into this game, he had 59 for 735. Preseason All-American pick, and it's been a frustrating day for him. Timeout called here by UTEP on a fourth down and seven at the 42. We'll take a big timeout. You're watching WAC football on Fox Sports Net. It's the Bucs, 37, the Miners, 7. these two and their attitude, but this is part of the problem for UTEP. Where's the T and the E? They just haven't had it together all day, and neither is their football team, Gary. <laughs> They're missing a couple parts there. There's no doubt about it. Things have not been hitting on all cylinders, and but those guys are up for it. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Fourth and seven, the ball for the 42 for UTEP. A flag thrown here as Perez takes the snap. Get that flag back in the pocket. Just turn it to the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty down the nose for it. Well, the last two drives now, Gary Nord's offense has tried to go for it on fourth down, and both times they've had a penalty, which is forcing them back to a fourth and long situation, fourth and over 10, and having to punt. Deal will be back for TCU. UTEP with Glenn Beard on to kick it away. He stands at his own 39 yard line. There you see Beard. Deal is back on the 10 of the Frogs. Shanks this one out of bounds. And Did you see that? Beard and Schobel got into it as Beard was getting ready to exit the field. I'll tell you what, this one could get real ugly because we've had a lot of personal fouls, a lot of penalties in general. Right now, the game appears to be pretty well decided. Well, let me tell you something that the UTEP has had to live with for one solid year, and that is that record that Ladanian Tomlinson set a year ago. Here on this field, 406 yards, an NCAA mark. They knew as a football team they'd be coming back here this season. They wanted to settle the score, but it just hasn't gone their way. And so you see the frustration which has built up for the entire year. A little bit of that is showing on the field today. Last year, 52-24, the final here. TCU doing it, and certainly a... The Tomlinson's record, and that's shown over and over again on all the highlights everywhere nationwide. And speaking of which, here's LT as he jitters to the 30 to 31 yard line. And we'll keep the update for you intact on Tomlinson this afternoon as Derek Walker made the tackle that time. Tomlinson, 245 yards rushing now for Ladanian Tomlinson. 
So he's over 2,000. Well, he's over for 5,000 for the career. And who knows? He may be over 2,000 by the end of the day for the year as Tomlinson again carries here. He is at 1679 coming in. And needing 321 yards. 345 to go in the third quarter. You were a betting man. What do you think? Well, he's up over 1,900 yards for his quest for 2,000 yards, but uh, he's had a career against UTEP. <laughs> well, he sure has. Look at those numbers just against UTEP the last three games. Third and three in the 33 of printers to pass it to Tomlinson. And he's got the first down as he goes out of bounds. Near the 39-yard line, Weldon Cooks covering on the play. Well, that's only LT's eighth reception of the year, Bill. He hasn't thrown it to him too many times this year. Why not? You don't have to just let him run it. But good job here. Let him get out in the flat and show what he can do catching the football. More importantly, he's got no speed to get by the defender for the first down. Tomlinson tying his career long run on that 89-yarder earlier today. There's his catches this season. First to 10 at the 39 for the Frogs, 37-7. Tomlinson slips and slides near the 44-yard line. Tackle by number 94, Rick Fetty. And Rick Fetty makes the tackle. Sophomore out of Corpus Christi. The other records that uh, Ladanian is setting, you know, there's still still more work to be done beyond this week. They go to SMU next week, Bill, and big rivalry game here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So those numbers are just going to increase. At SMU and Printers going deep off the fingertips of Dunbar and nearly intercepted. Walker back on there, D.J. Walker, who's got five interceptions this year. Thought he had number six, and Dunbar thought he had a reception. D.J. Walker gives Dunbar just a little bit of a push here. Watch him there with his left hand, pushed him just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but the ball comes down to him because Dunbar couldn't pull it in, and he, did, he almost had him on here. It's going to have been the story for the Miners, though. They have not been able to come up with deep play. Third and five now from the 44. Tomlinson. Got this balance across midfield. They're going to say he's down. Yeah, about the 49 of UTEP. Daniel Kerr, freshman out of Odessa Permian, makes the tackle. Little option play that time by the Frogs, and good job of blocking on the outside. The, the wide receivers out there in front. Kevin Brown, especially number 85, getting a good block, holding up his defender long enough to let Tomlinson get through the hole. And die for the first down. Coach Dennis Franchion taking his team to a third consecutive goal and. Trying to take another whack title or share one with him. First and ten for the 49, and Printers got a bit deep, but he's corralled, got loose for two. Now he's got some blockers. One more to go. Watch out. Printers. And UTEP recovered. The printer still picks up about eight on the play, even though he ran about 60. And Walker pushed him out, Derek Walker. And the Danian Thompson slipped through the line of scrimmage, and if Casey Printers had found him, it might have been a score here. Watch as Printers comes out, but watch number five when he rolls back. Number five, I'm going to take the play off and go this way now. I, I got the ball wide open, Casey. Go ahead and throw it to me. Just doesn't see him, and he picks up a pretty good down, pretty good yardage here on the play. And as you said, Billy ran about 75 yards for five. Second and four now at the 43-yard line. And the pitch out. Hey Stoker stopped uh, past the 35 before he's bumped out of bounds. Andrew Hay Stoker, his 35th carry of the year, first of the day. He's average at 4.4 carry out of Arlington Lamar High School. Well, the Cooks the push out on the play. And after the play there, the previous play, Hay Stoker comes in here and pretty good pop there at the, at the point, and then somebody follows from the inside. Kind of a rude way to get your first touch in the ball game. Gabe Williams in on the play as well. And there is Andrew Hayes Stoker setting up again. Transfer from the University of Tulsa. First to 10. 33. Hayes Stoker, the push forward here to the 40 yard line. 
side. Two minutes to go here in the third period. Tomlinson comes back in. You know, a lot of the success that this offense has had for TCU has been a direct result of their offensive line play. They've had you know, the five starters there. They've started the last you know, consecutive 21 games together. So when you have that consistency, the offensive line play can be a, be a big plus for your offense. And they've played very well today. Now, once again, they just uh, control the football game. Second and seven. It's time to pull back lane. Maybe a yard to the 29. The offensive line, they start four seniors there. So, you know, one of the things about this Horn Frog football team for, for 2001 is they've got to replace those guys. They've been out there a long time together, and you know, it's just one of the things that a, a football team has to go through. You've got guys you want seniors to play, but you also have to you know, sometimes have some of the younger guys come in and get some experience because next year might be a little testing time for the, for the club. Third six complete at the 20. Still stumbling and across down near the 12-yard line. Kevin Brown on the reception. Again, in this TCU team, Clemens making the tackle on Brown that time. But over the U-10 minor. TCU with a 37-7 lead as we move to the start of the fourth quarter. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Kevin Eschenfelder with you here at Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. And TCU with its second and 11, the ball on the 13th, 13-yard line, and Tomlinson lines up. Behind Lane, the fullback. Printers to throw and does to Lane. The 10, the 5, trying to dive in. The football. It was real dead first. Walker making the tackle and Lane trying to get his second score of the day. In this play they've worked to perfection here three or four times today. Both the Chad Purcell and now with George Lane coming out of the back here. A little play action pass to the fullback. UTEP has not picked that play up at all today, and more importantly, it's a first down for the Horn Frogs to the one yard line. Tomlinson has 267 yards today on 25 carries. He needs 321 to get the 2,000 mark for the season. He gets the carry here. LT on the carry. Oh, I say can. Almost squeezed into the end zone. And it'd be interesting, Gary, to see that that's why the bulk of the TCU fans are sticking around here to see just how many he gets. And it'd be interesting to see if Dennis Franchione decides, all right, let's see if we can get him to 2,000. I don't think LT's just getting warmed up. You see him, they were waving his hand. That's the like thing. Hey, run the same play again. I want that one again. Run it again. It's a, it's a common thing out there. You know, he's a competitor, and uh, Dennis Franchione knows that he's got a competitor out there. And he's going to get him the football. I don't, I don't think he's going to take him out of his football. Goal! Second to goal from the one-yard line now. Dunbar in motion. Tomlinson, no doubt this time, as he leaps across. And TCU... And Tomlinson gets six more. His third touchdown of the day. Well, Bill, to go with all the numbers, he's a very humble young man. He talks about his offensive line. He calls them his big uglies, and he knows that they're the ones that get him these yardage and the tough yards, but that one over the top, that's got to be all LT right there. on for the point after. Good. 44 to 7 TCU and Tomlinson his third touchdown of the day. After going 68 and 89, he leaps for one here. We'll be back with more in a moment. There are those big uglies and they've done it again today as they've helped power TCU to a 44-7 victory or victory. <laughs> it's just a matter of moments. 13-49 in fact to go as Hello, TCU. Victor. <laughs> He's looking at us, Bill. That's Jeff Garner and Victor Payne. Jeff, you guys having some fun today. Austin. At the one yard line. Bring it up, Austin, and he has stopped shy of the 20 near the 16-17 yard line. And that's where UTEP will get it. 44-7 TCU with 13.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. Purcell making the tackle, doing it both sides of the football today. A little teams action, also running the football, catching a pass or two here and there. 
these seniors, they really know what it means to play your final game at your home stadium. These is going to go on and play some more football this year. That's not the end of the season, but your last game at home, it's one you always remember. First and ten at the 17. Austin. The motion. Hand off to Porter. And he stopped at the 24-yard line. Baden on the stop for the TCU Horn Frogs. Yeah, some of the folks leaving here, Gary, if I came on this day, and it's really been much better than we, what we anticipated otherwise, but I'm not leaving because you don't know until, until I know Tomlinson's got those pads off for sure. I'm not leaving. And you may think, well, okay, they'll take him out if he gets three or he gets 320 yards. But what if he gets the ball and a handoff from his own 10 and he goes 90? <laughs> you might see another record set. You still could have that happen. The scoring drive, the last one, 15 plays and 74 yards. And Tomlinson capped off. Well, I wonder. I, you know, they, they decided to take this bowl game early, the mobile out of They've got a pretty good score working here for the quarter seven. They'd they win out and have a finish up with a 10 and 1 record. You want to wonder if the, there might have been some other opportunities for them instead of taking a Mobile Alabama berth as early as they have. You see the distance needed for the first down. And Coach Franchione telling us yesterday that last year a commitment was made to them early, no matter what they did at the finish. And he kind of felt obligated that uh, once it became obvious that there were not going to be a the BCS picture, which was a, a long-range goal, but as the season has kind of unfolded, had they been able to go unbeaten, that might have been obtainable. But after that, with all the leads being locked in, uh, they decided to go ahead and they said they had a great time in Mobile last year. Those folks were great to them. They make the commitment to them back. Well, the WAC Conference just it does not have an automatic, you know, uh, bid to a BCS bowl. But they recently got an announcement that they were going to be in on the discussions of the BCS. So at least they feel like they're back in the door now uh, for future things uh, with coming up in the WAC. More college football coming up here on a Saturday on Fox Sports Net. We'll take you west to the Pac-10 and the Apple Cup as Washington. Rated number six to take on rival Washington State. I want to remind some of our viewers will be going away to that game before this one is completed. The rest of you, of course, will take it there immediately following this contest. As we have 12-18 to go here in UTEP, just trying to move the football right now after facing 44 straight points from TCU since the UTEP touchdown that opened this game. Trying to get the tackle that time. Yeah, Allen Ray does a good job of coming back inside, but Shannon Brazil, the linebacker, does a good job of avoiding the blocker and then cutting uh, Ray coming inside on that wide receiver screen. Otherwise, it's going to be a big play for the Miners. Second and four. And off quarter. And not going to get there. A little shy of it at the 37. Ashley and McCarty making the tackle. Stuart Ashley, a senior from Katy, Texas. McCarty from Fort Worth here at Eastern Hills High School in this area. Ashley had another solid season for this club. Third and two at the 37 yard line. Austin got the first down. Curtis Fuller making the tackle. Owens also there. And Cleveland, bigger part in there with the period that time. Rovan Cleveland, freshman. Sometimes when your offense is kind of sputtering here late in the game, you just decide, let's go back to basics and let's run the football. Let's try to get some execution in the running game and don't try to be too fancy. And that's what UTEP has done here, and they've got a first down and try to get something working. First and ten. Perez fires, completes it. First down across midfield at the 46-yard line. They are the uh, Ray again. Gary covering there, strong safety. 
We talked to Dennis Franchione yesterday, Bill. He, he talked about uh, this young quarterback, Rocky Perez, and how well he's played this year. He said in the games that he's viewed, he, he, in his opinion, he thought that Rocky had his A game on for the entire year. I, I'm not sure that Rocky had his A game on today. We'll take a look at the scoring for this football game. But you can tell that he throws the ball very well. He's got good velocity on the football, and uh, he's had a few balls sail on him today and had a few drops as well. First to 10 from the 46. Porter not much. And, and, you know, along those lines, you think about one of the other comments that Coach Franchio made to us was that Gary Nord has done a great job of taking people and putting them in the right place and giving them the best opportunity to succeed. And I think Perez is one of those players that you had a little bit of a run by committee, as they called it. You had a great wide out of Mays, a good tight end, and then you called the right place at the right time. But today, a TCU defense that you mentioned without a blitz put enough pressure on Perez he's never been in a comfort zone no he hasn't they've rushed four people throughout the day and put pretty good pressure on him although the sacks haven't come they've uh, they forced Rocky to throw off his back foot and a lot of pressures he's got more pressure now there he is it was on 43 fires and looking for Mays that time incomplete but Brazil back there with the pressure on the quarterback and that's just an example of what uh, Rocky has had to go through all day. You know, their offense has only given up 17 sacks on the season, the offensive line, and they gave up 27 sacks a year ago. You take an experienced quarterback like Perez, who's in there as a senior, and a lot of those non-sacks are because he's smart enough to get rid of the football and, and uh, instead of taking the big, the big loss. Third and 11 now for the 47-yard line of TCU. Perez again out of the shotgun. 44-7, Horn Frogs rolling here. Perez. Got a little time here and completes it. Torrey dives across the 30 down to the 29-yard line where it'll be a first down for UTEP. Tyrone Sanders, a redshirt freshman covering on the play. Well, and the other mark of Perez and what a leader is to this team, he as a starter has seen UTEP go 13-11. and 11. They were 9-47 and 47 the five years before he arrived. Not just a big, big turnaround in this whole program and Gary Nord has helped build this offense over the last couple of years to what it is now. This has just been one of the performances that they've run up against a great defense. The TCU defense ranked first in the nation. Done a pretty good job against his offense, shutting him down, rushing the quarterback in coverage. Cleveland tripped up at the 30-yard line. And speaking of Gary Nord, uh, you talk about here's a team that's going to go 8-3 and three with all three losses. Number one ranked Oklahoma, Texas A&M at College Station, a game they were in for a half. And then they win the WAC, or share the WAC title last week with a victory over Rice. Sellout crowd. They lead the league in attendance. They're going bowling too, folks. And then they lose here today if this continues on. Completion here to another nationally ranked team. So uh, one of the kudos to the Miners. Fuller covering on that play as Mays making the grab. Well, a little, little side to uh, that, what happened out there a week ago out at Utah. Gary Nord asked him about that experience on the field as we saw that he actually got knocked down in the melee out there. <laughs> Had to get help to his feet in the whole bit. But uh, he said that was the most exciting, electrifying atmosphere. 55,000 people out there at the stadium. And just a, a, a long, long time coming for that program. But... Uh, He's not feeling that same joy today. They average 44,000 a game this year at the Sun Bowl. No bank Cleveland. Not much on third, and at this point, would imagine you would have to go ahead and go forward on fourth down instead of worrying about a pretty long field goal attempt. Brazil with the stop for the frog. It's kind of impressive to see that the UTEP and the, all the fans that they have here, we're looking across the field at the, uh, the far side of the field, and the whole left side of the stands were full of uh, orange shirts. So you know they, they travel very well and they support that UTEP program. A lot of followers here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and they had buses and uh, they had charter planes. They knew this was a big game for them. They wanted to win this black championship outright. Perez dumps over the middle, and a flag will be called to be interference as he's trying to get it to Napkin. And Curtis Fuller, I believe, covering on the play. And Curtis just got there a little bit too soon before the ball got there. And the side judge threw the flag in. That's a 
spot foul in college football. It's uh, still going to be a first down if it's beyond the sticks. That's their defense. Less than 15 yards. Spot foul. Automatic first down. So the Miners have a first and 10 at the 18 yard line. Here's a look at it. Take a look at the. Uh, he's got his right hand on him. And a little bit too early there. Big Nat can say, I want that ball. <laughs> Just couldn't grab it. And a knack, a little bit of redemption. I think he's felt that he's probably been interfered with a couple of times today, but uh, he does such a good job of shielding the defender. Believe me. Okay, one man plays that out of ten. This TCU defense has really been something, though. Worthen makes the tackle there. That, well, I know they take a lot of pride uh, in not allowing it. They don't want this team to score. Uh, you know, seven points is all they've got up there on the board so far, and that was early in the ball game, as you said, though, after a turnover, and they put a nice pass at the corner of the end zone for the only score the Miners have had. So if they can hold them out here and not allow them any more points, this defense will be right on target with, with what they've had all season, only allowing nine and a half points a game. Second and 10 now from the 18-yard line. Perez trying to get him in the end zone. Got a man wide open, incomplete. Sherman Austin was there, couldn't make the catch. Walls was in the vicinity covering. Well, the problem with this play is Rocky Perez takes far too long. He waits, waits, waits. Austin is open long, long before this ball is even thrown. He should have thrown the ball right at him near the goal line. He would have had an easy touchdown. Instead, he's having to loft it to the back of the end zone. Would have been a good catch if he'd have made it. Yeah, and I think Austin there is also realizing he's running out of real estate and probably lost his concentration a little bit, and it was going to be a great catch if he made it. Third and 10 now from the 18-yard line. 639 to go in the fourth quarter and a timeout is going to be called by UTEP. We'll take a brief break as well. Fox Sports Net bringing you whack football where it's TCU 44, UTEP 7. Welcome back, 44-7 TCU over UTEP with 639 remaining and defense has certainly been the story all year. As you look at TCU, 251 yards a game is all they allow, and a coach Gary Patterson. And you see UTEP's had a pretty fine year, a much improved defensive team, but no match today here. Here's Perez on third and ten, and it is complete inside the eight, and it'll be a first down. And once again, Lee Mays, the leaping grab with Hillard, Hilliard covering. And you see why Mays is talked about by his coach Gary Nord as a potential first-round draft pick in the NFL. He's just a junior. Well, I tell you, he's just got tremendous athletic ability, 4-3 speed in the 40, and here on the sideline, kind of just jumping up and getting his feet down inbounds, making a nice, sure catch. Good job of coming back to the quarterback and making a good play. Mays, career record for TD receptions, had three last week against Rice, one today for his 15th of the year. Here's one in the end zone, complete touchdown, UTEP! What a grab by Ray! Aaron Ray on the seven-yard leaping reception. And the Miners make it 44 to 13. Well, just a timing pass here. Rocky throws it out to Ray, who's got the man beat to the corner of the end zone. A lot, of, a lot of teams like to lay that up, but that one's pretty much almost on a line, and Ray does a nice job of extending for the grab. Perez will hold for the point after from Bishop, and the left footer is up and good, and it's 44 to 14, and UTEP with 625 to go in the game is back on the board. On the seven-yard TD pass to Alan Ray, a senior out of Houston, Jersey Village High. We're back with a kickoff in a moment. Dancing to stay warm here as things get a little bit chillier. UTEP scoring to make it 44-14. The TCU fans, though, Still enjoying every bit of this one as the Horn Frogs up 30 with 6.25 to go and UTEP to kick off and we would expect an onside. Let's see if that's what we get as Ricky Bishop, senior out of El Paso, the short kick, Dunbar at the 27. And 
down there near the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for TCU. And let's see what the Frogs come up with. Castillo made the tackle that time for UTEP. I don't think there's any doubt that number five is going to be in the huddle and go out there for this play. And give them a chance to get some more yardage on the ground. Tomlinson with currently 27 carries and 268 yards rushing and three touchdowns today. First and 10 at the 35. Tomlinson, the pitch. Up to the 40, maybe the 41. Let's go down to Kevin Eschenfeld. All right, Bill, keep an eye on this. You know, they may be putting LaDainian Tomlinson in at this point. One, you did talk about the 2,000 yards, but at least this time, give him one last chance to come off this field for one last time at Amon Carter Stadium and have the crowd appreciate it for it. Yeah, you know there will uh, be a great ovation here for LaDainian Tomlinson, senior out of Waco, Texas. Second and four after the six-yard pickup on the first down carry at the 41-yard line. And so close, he got the first down, but we're just all watching to see, is he going to break off another big one? And Gary, even on both those carries, he's been uh, just a grab or two away. Shepard held on that time. Well, I can tell you he's given his all. He wants it. He wants to break for another one. Well, and UTEP knowing exactly what's going on, even more impressive, as uh, he picked up seven that time. It's first and ten now at the 48-yard line. There are the totals, 29 for 282. Needs 321 to get 2,000 yards. Tomlinson, and again, and we talk about yards after contact, yak, as the coaches refer to it. Uh, Tomlinson get the big burst from his line, but then continuing to carry people with him. That time, Walker and Williams make the stop. got eight. He's working hard out there, trying to get more and more yardage each time he catches the football. And after contact, Bill, that's just the mark of a great back. And what about Thompson? I think he's, you know, he's just getting worn down. It's late in the year. A lot of carries. 310 coming into the ball game. And that's almost 30 carries today. Second down and two for the 44. Tomlinson again. Stiff arms one, tugs, and across to the 38-37 yard line, D.J. Walker makes the tackle. Four fourteen to go in the ball game, and the Danian Tomlinson treating us all, and it's another superlative performance as Tomlinson. It's a breather here as Hayes Stoker comes in. Lane is the fullback, first to 10 from the 37. Hayes Stoker to the 30 and to the 25 before he has popped hard. DJ Walker making the tackle. Well, Will they keep Hayes Stoker in or bring Tomlinson back? Because Tomlinson's got 296 now. 296 yards on 31 carries. And they're 23 yards out. So, yeah, the 300 is certainly there. But remember, the 321 gets him 2,000 for the season. All chanting LT now. First and 10 of the 23. to the 20-yard line, and that'll give him 299. Merkins makes the tackle. A minute ago, Bill, I saw Tomlinson walking down the sideline when he was out for the one play when Stoker came in. Dennis Franchione had his arm around the, the tailback and just talking to him and you know, wants to make sure that he wants to go back in there and kind of put things in perspective for the young man. And, He's a leader of this football team, and he's back out there on the field. Second and seven. Tomlinson picks up another seven as he gets down to the 13-yard line. Down to number 44, Kamu High. High making the tackle. 
mean, when everybody on the football field knows exactly who's getting the ball, Gary, and the guy still gets five, seven, eight yards, uh, I mean, it's just a huge testament to not only his line, but just this guy's determination. Well, I tell you, LaDainian Tomlinson is about wore out, and uh, they call timeout here, TCU does, just to get him a breather so he might get another carry. Stay with us. We'll be back. I think I know what's going to happen. Welcome back to Amon Carter Stadium. Following the timeout on a third and one, Printers went back to pass and got sacked. So now it is a fourth down and long, about nine. And they call it eight and the 21, and Tomlinson is out of the ball game. And 33 carries, 305 yards, his third career, third or 300 plus yard game, and Tomlinson apparently threw for the afternoon. Glad to get the 300 yards. And we will worry about the 2,000 next week against SMU. Although a timeout is called here. They set up for a field goal. We'll see if they can get field goal. Stay with us. 305 yards. Fourth down and eight, and Tomlinson is done for the day or so, it would appear, with his 305 yards. I think he's earned a bit of a breather. Bill Landry reasons Kevin Eschenfelder with you is... He will set up for a field goal attempt from 38 yards, and it is good. So Chris Kalak in with the 38-yard field goal. A flag is thrown, and Jackson may have run into him, but they'll probably uh, just go ahead and take the three at this point. 40. 7 to 14 if they let it stand. On Kalaki's 37 yard field goal. That's one of those situations, Bill. They give them an automatic first down where they can run the clock out entirely. And yeah. But you take points off the board if you do that. It's just one of those coaching decisions you have to make. 